Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. We're very happy and excited to be back with you. We begin tonight season three of our Chronicle with episode one, Dead Road. Let's meet the vampires. I'm Alex Ward, and I play Jasper. I'm Erica Ishii, and I play Annabelle. I'm Cynthia Marie, and I play Nellie G. B. Dave Walters, I play Victor Temple. Looking forward to a silky smooth, uneventful night. And I'm Jason Carl, your storyteller. Before we get started, we'd like to thank a few people. We'd like to thank the Master Crafts people at Dogmite for our beautiful dice boxes with the clan symbols on them so that you know your Toreador from your Nosferatu and your Ventru from your Bruja for our fantastic storyteller screen. We'd also like to thank, of course, Geek and Sundry, our home here at LA by Night. We'd like to thank Paradox Interactive, White Wolf Entertainment. We'd like to thank the family, you, who have been supporting us. Thank you so much for making us feel so welcome on your Friday nights. And tonight we'd like to thank our new sponsor, Hero Forge. They are the folks who made the minis in this awesome diorama of the Coterie characters. Yeah, right? A little Annabelle right there. <laughs> so, do you have a tabletop character that means a lot to you? Hero Forge's character creator lets you design your own hero, even a vampire, online in full 3D, and then order your perfect tabletop miniature in a range of materials like high detail plastic or cast metal. Visit HeroForge.com to design your perfect miniature today. And Hero Forge not only is sponsoring this episode, but they're also supporting us in bringing L.A. by Night to you in podcast form, something that so many of you have been asking us for. I know, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? In only a short time, all of the episodes from season one and two will be available as podcasts wherever you listen to podcasts now. That's also where you'll be able to enjoy our WonderCon live show. Now, some production episodes made that not quite as viable as we would have liked as a video episode, so you'll be able to enjoy it as an audio podcast. We're sorry about that, but you are welcome for the podcasts. So please check out HeroForge.com and consider grabbing a few custom minis for your next game of Vampire the Masquerade or Dungeons & Dragons or whatever you happen to be playing at home. They just added mermaids to the types of characters that you can make. I'll bet you can even make a vampire mermaid, which would be pretty cool. Season four. <laughs> now, on the subject of that, <laughs> on the subject of that WonderCon episode, you may catch some references to it tonight during our story. Don't worry; those are more teasers than spoilers, and it will only enhance your experience when you listen to our very funny and a little over-the-top episode coming soon to a podcast near you. Twitch subscribers also get a special version of that as well. Now, speaking of catching up, if you're not current, you can find all the episodes of season one and season two of LA by Night on YouTube with just a few more epilogues to drop in the weeks ahead. Now, if you can't wait, if you need your LA by Night right now, you can, of course, watch all of LA by Night, season one and two, and all the epilogues on Twitch by subscribing. It's $4.99 a month, and you can watch all of Geek & Sundry's library of video-on-demand content, including LA by Night, Callisto 6, the TBD RPG, and a lot more. Subscribing also supports this channel and this show, and that's a very good thing. Now, whether you've been with us since the very beginning, or you are just joining us for the first time tonight, let's remind ourselves of what this is. This is the world of darkness, and vampires exist in this world a vast conspiracy of the undead hiding in plain sight. Our coterie 
are these creatures? Pretending to be human, fighting for some semblance of safety and security in a dark and mysterious night. Every night, they struggle to find their place in a Baroque web of secrets, ancient conspiracies, and violent upheaval. In their quest for survival, they leverage every possible asset at their disposal, from arcane abilities to simple diplomacy, subterfuge, and seduction. And every morning when the sun comes up, the mortals of Los Angeles can go about their day in relative safety, unaware that they must share this city with these monsters. With that firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. One month ago, the Coterie helped make it very clear to Prince Venevar and the Camarilla that the Anarchs will not bow down to him. First, they sent the Prince's Herald, Chaz Price, Nellie's sire, to the final death. And then Annabelle, with a little help from her friends, rallied the Anarchs of Los Angeles to resist Vannevar's oppressive decrees. Since then, it has been a month of violent clashes as kindred on both sides skirmish in the streets. The Camarilla seems to be testing the Anarchs' defenses and their resolve, and the Anarchs seem determined to resist. So far, neither side has gained a clear advantage. Tonight, the Coterie is in Club Maharaja. You still spend the days here occasionally, sleeping in relative safety, particularly after a tense or dangerous encounter with the Camarilla. Victor's Club has been a reasonably secure second home after Griffith College but he's building a new, better, more secure establishment in the valley, Club Maharani. And the club's new grand opening is just a few nights away. So you are sharing this place as a haven one last time. And when night falls, your plan is to collect your personal belongings and to erase anything that might violate the masquerade, all traces of anything that could lead your enemies to you. But first you sleep. And when the mortals of the city move, breathe, and live, you don't. During the day is when you are truly dead. In the daytime, the mortals are safe from you, at least for a little while until the sun goes down. But during those hours when the sun is in the sky, whatever mystical force that exists in your vitae 
the force that animates your undead bodies and your mind, also sleeps. It's a deep, dark slumber that robs you of your senses. And during these hours, you are truly dead to the world and vulnerable. You first become aware of the trouble when there is a terrible, awful sound. Awakening during a crisis requires humanity roles. Starting from Alex. Wake with evening's freshness. Wake with evening's freshness. The ritual is enacted. Mm -hmm. So, Jasper. Yeah. You are wide awake. Your eyes flash open. You're not sure what you're aware of first. The vibration in the building, the floor and the walls, the heat rolling through the air, the shouting voices, or the smell of smoke. Annabelle? Up, A up, humanity up. roll. So, no hunger dice, only regular vampire dice, equal to your entire unspent humanity. The difficulty is three. You need three successes at least. Five. Five successes. You too awaken with the start, aware of the imminent danger. <laughs> Nellie? What's happening? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five successes. Five successes also? You have no difficulty coming awake. Disoriented, of course, at first, but able to move. Ugh. Victor. Ooh, uh, seven with a crit. Seven, a critical. Mm. You are awake and able to take one action with a clear head. Call Campbell. Do. Campbell. On it, sir, stay where you are. We'll get to you as soon as we can. What time is it? Check You're my not phone. Sure. You are in, of course, the sub-basement, which Victor keeps says the securest haven possible for you all, far below the club. This is arguably the best place to be in a situation like this. You can feel the heat rolling through the air from above you. The building vibrates. This is not an ordinary fire. This is why I don't stay here man, often. <sighs> so it is daytime. It's daytime. You have hours to go before sunset. Shh. Go upstairs. Is anybody upstairs? We can get through the tunnels. They'll be fine. We probably shouldn't be here. Do we have an exit what from this room? Is we, of all course, that ruckus. We, yes, we have an exit for the room. Uh, I now there are four possible exits from the sub basement. One is the elevator. Probably not a good idea. One is the access door that leads to the stairway that takes you to the upper floors. One is the secured door that leads to the tunnel that leads to the garage. And one is the access tunnel that exits in the unused attorney's office on the same block, the emergency escape route that Jasper has used several times before. We can't go. We can't go that way. It's There's a sound of running feet. The door to the upstairs stairwell bursts open Campbell, his face blackened with smoke and soot, his clothes tattered, covered in ash, followed by two other members of your security team, one with a terrible burn up and down his left arm. They're shouting something at you, Victor. It's hard to hear over the smoke and the din that follows them out the open door. Oh my god, is any of, your, is any of the other staff up there? <laughs> They'll do their jobs. We it's got we got to take care we of us. Like yes, we got to get out of here. Campbell, to... are any other staff members still in the building? Yeah, everybody's still here. We got to go, Annabelle, sir. Annabelle, it's fire. We cannot be anywhere near that. We got to take everything from here that points to us being what we are and get out of here. <sighs> what do you want us to do? Is there a path to my office upstairs? The safe? The stairway's not on fire yet. We could probably make it, but I don't know how long the building's gonna last, and the emergency services are, You're they're gonna be here any second. Risk their life? <sighs> Is anything in a fireproof safe? Well, everything's in a fireproof safe. Well, I, fuck! The gun? There was two of these. The other one's upstairs in the safe. 
Let's I'll get it, sir. I'll do it. Yeah. No. No. I'll get it. I'll carry the safe down here. How you big is the safe? You can have the combination, man. I trust you. I mean, if it was a safe that uh, doesn't matter. I'll go. Yes. I tell him the combination. And I'll. I'm gonna head upstairs. I'm going to. Uh, sure, we need why to not? know. I need to get you out of here. We need to get out of here. No, we're not gonna leave him. It's, he's faster than all of us. Yeah, but he's Jasper. He needs somebody. Actually, I'm faster. She's faster. He's stronger. Uh, Semantics. Anyway, we sir, need Sir, we you. have to go. Here. Yes, we go. do. Like I can find my own way out of here. Go. Uh, we should regroup at your place? <laughs> sir, meet us in the garage. I'll send College Bailey. College is probably I'll go better. with Mr. Jasper. Yeah, we'll get to the garage. The the college. SUVs are all blacked out. Yes, get to the college. The college. Get to the college. Wherever co you go, yes. text me where you're going. The move to the move to the garage. Gun out. Sleepy, but gun out. Okay. Very sleepy, very sluggish. The vitae inside your bodies, despite <laughs> the terror and the excitement that rises within you, is slow to respond. You all succeeded in awakening during the crisis, so you can remain awake for the scene. Beyond that is going to require extra effort. So, Campbell has agreed to escort Jasper and whoever else is going upstairs to try to get to the safe where the most incriminating evidence is. Yeah. I'm going to, you don't know who or what might be up there. Uh, I can't stop you. The other two security guards remain here in the sub-basement. The longer the door is open, the more smoke and heat pours into the area where you are. Now, the smoke doesn't irritate your lungs. You don't breathe, but it makes it difficult to see clearly. I'm getting you out of here. Let's go to the garage. What about Annabelle she, and Jasper? They'll I mean, catch up. They know They know what this is. They'll catch up. Get to the garage. We're taking the limo. I swear to fucking God, if Just, you mention that goddamn limo one more time. You can be mad at me alive tonight. Let's go. Oh, fucking so, Reckover's face is... Two ugh. groups. Here's how we'll do this. We will use the three rounds and out rule for your, to make it to your goals. So for Jasper and Annabelle and Campbell, it'll be three rounds of rolls yeah. to dodge the fire, get to the safe, and get out through an exit. Okay. For Victor and Nelly and their two security escorts, it'll be three rolls to get through the blockages and obstacles, get to a vehicle, and get out first round for each group in the stairway. Once you get to the main floor, it's incredibly hot. The fire doors remain closed and unburned, but you can feel the heat on the other side, and you can see the flickering glow of the fire from around the edges of the door. Fire is the sovereign bane of your kind. This is the thing that vampires fear most, and it is a risk a frenzy to bypass the door safely. So, your current undamaged willpower, plus two dice for your humanity, both Jasper and Annabelle. The difficulty is again three. Seven. Seven Pretty successes. Critical. You, that's a, one of them's a crit? It was one crit. Okay. So Annabelle? Eight, yeah, total of seven. Three. Three. Barely enough. You clamp down on the white hot fear, refusing to be mastered by it, staying in command of yourself. Fire is, after all, what makes your spirit. Jasper dashes past the burning door, followed quickly by Annabelle and the two security guards, and they continue up, up, up to the second floor. Round one for Victor and Nellie, getting through the tunnel, which is beginning to collapse. Not an unfamiliar situation for you both. So, to dodge the debris and make it safely through, Whichever is better for you, dexterity in athletics or strength in athletics. Could I uh, spend a 
Can I activate the blood to increase my strength? You want to rouse the blood? Yes, please. Yes. Make a roll. Well, I succeeded. You succeed. You do yes. not get hungrier. This is not my strength, my darling. I know. One success. One success. Uh, I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna use willpower. <laughs> Reroll. Yes, please. Uh, critical, five. Five successes total. Mm -hmm. That's much better. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this strength based, by the way, not dexterity. Not dexterity based? Strength based. Understand. Nelly? I assume you're going first. Absolutely. Okay, great, so I'm gonna watch how he does it and I'm just gonna, <laughs> um, I'm gonna activate blink. <laughs> yeah. I'll smash through some concrete, so clear path for you. Yeah, you absolutely. You did so well. You mm -hmm. did so well. So, uh, Victor up. brute forces his way through. He uses his mass, his shoulders, his arms, even his legs sometimes to force a path through the falling rubble, pushing aside the falling metal. And you're alarmed to see that the very plaster of the walls is starting to smoke. <sighs> it's getting hot. Whatever has set the building on fire is part of some very powerful accelerant, probably an explosive. I've seen excessive flame like this before. But it does clear a path for Nelly. Or it doesn't. <laughs> How many? I'm gonna burn a willpower. <laughs> mm -hmm. Off to a great start already. <laughs> Oh, two successes. Two successes. Not so wonderful. As it's sleepy. Meet my beauty rest. <laughs> we both do. Fortunately, because the tunnel itself is not yet ablaze, the damage that you take is all superficial, which means it's halved. So, take two points of superficial damage from the falling rubble So you make it to the end of the tunnel with the two security guards and two. I'm going to roll for them. They'll both use strength. Too many dice. Are they ghoul security guards? <laughs> Let's find out. Probably not. <laughs> I sent the good one with you. One of them makes it through with just superficial cuts. The other goes under as a pile of rubble falls from the ceiling along with burning, smoking plaster covering him up. We you can go, go back for him, but nope. you, risk, get, you nope. risk severe burning if you try to dig him out. I, gotta, out. I gotta get you out of here. No, let's go. Okay, round two. Jasper and Annabella. Yeah. You've made it past the burning door of the first floor and you're on your way up to the second? Right. Okay, so the building here is on fire. You need to make it through to the safe. So, first things first, fear frenzy. Humanity and two dice extra. Or willpower and two dice extra? Willpower, excuse me. Um, actually, hang on. Let's double check that. It's your arm damage willpower. Yeah, and then two dice for this hand. I'm gonna go ahead and burn one. Three. Three. Four. Okay. Both of you are able to resist the almost overwhelming temptation to let the beast preserve itself at any cost. You hesitate for what seems like an eternal moment before stealing yourself for the Come dash on. through the fire to the office. The this. next roll you need to make is to avoid being burned. It can okay. be dexterity based. Plus anything. Plus athletic. athletics. Four. Five. Five. Each of you take one aggravated wound. Ah! 
from fire, from burning debris, from the smoking carpet that's hot under your feet, but is the only injury you suffer as you make it to the safe. Are you bothering with the combination, or are you just going to rip it out? How big is the safe? It's like a shoebox size. I'm just ripping it out of the wall. Just going to tear it right yeah. out? Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to be carrying a flaming pistol in a fire. Yeah. Strength plus your potence dice. All right. Everything we have left from the hunters is in the safe. Yeah, I don't want to open that in fire. It's okay. I got this. I got two. Two successes. Yeah. Not enough. You I can shove feel them aside. The, I activate prowess. You can prowess. feel the metal bending, but it won't come loose. What is it? Strength plus your potent dice. Plus your, all your potent dice. And athletics? No, just strength and potence. Strength and potence alone. <laughs> Better. Three, four. Four successes. Added to Jasper's. It's enough. The safe comes away from the floor with the sound of tearing metal, and you have it in your grasp. Let's go. Let's go. Get out. Get out. Now. Round two for Victor and Nelly. You've made it through the tunnel, losing one of your security team in the rubble behind you. Now the door to the garage stands before you. You can feel the heat through it. There is fire on the other side. Fire on the other side of the door? There must be fire in the garage. The security guard pushes his way past you and opens the door. You see the lurid red-orange glow of flame on the other side, but it hasn't reached all the vehicles yet. Both of you need to check for a fear frenzy. So take your current undamaged willpower Remember not to count anything that you spent, and then add two more dice to it. But no blood dice, correct? But no hunger dice. Two successes. Not enough. Cannot re-roll with willpower. Four. Four successes, Nelly. Do you want to spend a willpower to master yourself for a few moments? Whew. Or do you want to leave your willpower intact? Mm-hmm. When you frenzy, you lose control. The beast is trying to save itself at all costs. It's going to flee from the source of danger without regard for anyone or anything in its way. Ooh, um, I'm gonna try to Hold composure, so I'm going to use a willpower. Burn a willpower. Take the damage to it. You know you don't have long before the fear overcomes you. So, Victor, security guard, and Nelly, making their way through the burning garage to one of the undamaged SUVs. It's, is, is the limo available? I would like the, to get to the limo if it's not. Mm. I mean, if it's, like, obvious. I'm not going to go through more fire to reach it. Let's leave it to random chance. It's at least armored. That's why I want the limo. Roll a hunger die. Let fate decide. Yes, success. Fantastic. You're like, you needed to fail. Fantastic for you. The limo is on the far side of the garage, farthest from the burning structure. So. I'm like, I look at you, I'm like, you all right? No. Then let's go. Okay. Soaring leap, actually. I start. You're going to take Nelly with you? Well, no, mm. she's fast. I know she's fast, but I'm going to soaring leap myself. Okay, so you're going to push yourself supernaturally over the flames, over the burning cars to the limo. Nelly, are you moving as fast as you possibly can? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to burn some more blood. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be mm-hmm. real fun. Check a rouse check. Oh, thank Goodness. Whew. Yeah, we're good. The beast, despite its urgent need to flee, remains in check for just a few moments longer, and you make it to the limo. The security guard throws himself into the driver's side and starts the engine as you pile in. Nelly, you feel the beast 
taking over. Round three, Jasper and Annabelle. You have the safe, you need to get out. From the second floor offices, there are several exits. The fire escape, if you can make it through the rest of the burning floor between here and there. The skylights and the leap down to the main dance floor, which you know to be in fire. Where is the closest access to underground exits? To underground exits. To the sewer exit is that I know still, is here. Is it still light out? Back the way you came, it is definitely daytime. So if you're outside, We're you'll burning. face the sun. <laughs> Campbell, to the sewer exit. We'll have to go back down the way we came, sir. I the first floor is sure to be in flames. Can you make it through? It's better than sun. You can't jump down into a burning dance floor. I mean, he could probably, well, can you? Can you make that jump? Yeah, be fine. Can you make it with the safe in your hands? Yeah. Campbell, I'm gonna carry you. <gasps> what? Come okay, here. Okay, dance floor. And I grab Campbell and pick him up. Mm -hmm. So from the offices to the lounge area, the balcony, and down onto the burning dance floor, which mm -hmm. you know will give you access back down to the sub-basement. Yeah. <laughs> Strength and athletics. And potence. Yeah. Add your potence to it. Ooh. Full power burning. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, you're going to have to make at least one more terror frenzy check before yep. you're out of here. That is a three for me. Seven, seven. Seven successes. Annabelle clears the space with a vaulting leap, plummeting down onto the burning dance floor, <laughs> landing hard. Jasper lands on his back, but Campbell's protected. You take the weight of it. You're welcome, Take Campbell. the damage. Take two, two, two superficial damage from the fall. Annabelle, take one. And now. Friendly. All right, Campbell, let's go. You're surrounded by burning flames in a building that's engulfed. So, one more frenzy check to get out. <gasps> Five. Five successes. Three. Three successes. Both of you, with very little hesitation, make it to the door. <sighs> So you're on your way back down to the sub-basement. Victor and Nella. When I see her starting to lose it, I look at her, dominate. Mm. What do you say? Calm. And what power do you use? Uh, I use compel. Mm. Make Call. a roll. <laughs> Three. Three. Yeah. <laughs> if only the powers of supernatural dominance could overcome the need of the beast to be free and safe. You reach out with your will, with the best of intentions, catching Nellie's fearful eyes, willing her with every fiber of your being to remain calm, but the beast will have its way. So, multiple things happen <laughs> at once. Victor, you see Nellie, no longer in control of herself, try to leap through the glass, separating you from the driver, pounding on it, clawing her way through. She wants to get to the driver's seat, maybe she wants to get out, you're not sure. The driver can see this in the rear view mirror, but he's trying to steer the car through the burning garage and get out. Do you want to restrain her? Uh, yeah. uh, yes. I will just put myself between between the her and the glass. Let's call it a grapple check. So yes. Strength and athletics. Nelly, you're gonna fight back. You want out. You don't want to be restrained. Nope. You want to be out. So, 
two successes. This is not my thing. Well, <laughs> I'm saying this to you. This is not my thing, Nelly. <laughs> Brute force is not Nelly's forte either. Yeah, you're so it, does my potence a, figure into that? You should add it to the role. If you are if you are calling on the power of your supernatural strength. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. So Nelly, strength and athletics for you as well. Oh, you're lucky. You can roll brawl if it's higher. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. My brawl was higher. <laughs> um, with the blood die, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just making sure he's strength enough. Okay. Glad Thank these you. windows are tinted. It's great. Ooh, ooh. Do also oh. two. Tied. You're both tied. Mm -hmm. yeah. She can't get away from you, and you can't haul her back. So you are locked in the struggle as the car careens through the burning wreckage of the garage. Um, may, mm. I, may I use rapid reflex actually to get my arm up and out of him? Uh, rapid reflexes would allow you to prepare if you were thinking clearly for yourself. Okay. If you want to spend another willpower no, to no. master yourself. I'm great. No? <laughs> great. You're all no, good? No, grappled, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Each of you take a superficial point of damage Hijo. from the struggle. Elbows, fists, clawing. Nobody has used fangs yet. Am I, even with my fortitude, I'm still one? Uh, the fortitude that you have would reduce the incoming damage, right? Yes. But I don't know that it can reduce it less than one unless you say it can. I guess it depends on how hard she's trying to hurt me, really. Mm, I don't think she's trying as hard to hurt you as she is to get away from you. Mm -hmm. So, no incoming damage. Okay. Although, you're paying for this shirt, by the way. Like, we're, <laughs> I'm like, it's... I hear nothing right now. <laughs> so... I need to make a couple rolls for the driver. He's good, but he's no Bailey, and he's no Campbell. But he's good enough. I'm like, I will dominate him to drive better. He's good enough. <laughs> drive your best. The car nearly plows into a burning SUV. The garage door openers aren't working. He's got to smash through out into the sunlight. Now the windows are heavily tinted. The sunlight is indirect. Nelly is already in a terror frenzy, but Victor, even with the sunlight obscured, it still burns. So you don't take damage this round. It will be another round before you begin to suffer the effects of the burning, but you do have to check the beast inside you. So your unspent willpower again, plus two dice. And that pool's getting smaller. I try to cover her to the best of my ability. <laughs> Any successes? <laughs> One success. It's the critical die, if that mm. matters. <laughs> Obscured sunlight requires three. You can't spend willpower, so you too are going to lose it. If you want to spend a willpower, I'll give you a round to tell the driver where you want him to take you. The college, the college. Don't stop for anything. He has the presence of mind to slam the door locks <laughs> on his control panel. <laughs> Two ravening, ravenous monsters in an armored limousine smashing through the door of an underground garage, exiting a burning building out into the full light of day, you are left with impressions of emergency vehicles, crowds gathering, people shouting, pointing, flashing lights. It's chaos and flames everywhere. In the sub-basement, several of the other exits are now blocked by fallen rubble, plaster, timber, and you hope that your colleagues are not under them. Where do you go? Go the quickest direction to an underground passage. That would be the emergency exit that leads to the attorney's office. From there, you can access the deep underground. Yeah. This is the route you took on the night yeah. you fled to prevent yourself from drinking from your friend. Uh, you've been at them before, you'll be fine. This does 
If my memory serves, this does require us to go outside for a second to get into the manhole. You correct? will be exposed to direct sunlight for a few moments. You will have to check your beast. Yeah, you'll be fine. You already have dealt with fire. It's the same thing, right? Is it? It's a big one. It, but it's far away. Same thing. Okay. <sighs> that and that's good. where you go. <sighs> yeah, we're going that way. <sighs> There's a moment of eerie mental twilight between exiting the dark tunnel and facing the sun, Annabelle, which you have not seen in months. This is your very, very first glimpse of yellow, white, beautiful light. And it's awful. It burns your skin. You can feel the flesh peeling and cracking as you're exposed to the direct rays of the thing that you once loved. Now, it is your worst possible enemy and nightmare. I run to the manhole cover, I rip it, I get down there now! <laughs> Terror Frenzy check for you both. This is direct sunlight. This camp will have any training on how to deal with these sorts of situations? He has been fully briefed, but he has never had to actually do it. Four. Four successes. Four. Four. That is the exact <laughs> difficulty that you need to avoid a terror frenzy when exposed to full direct sunlight. So I run out into the, mm -hmm. into the manhole cover and I rip the top off and I, I'm holding it for you to get down. <laughs> go, 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 go! <laughs> you throw yourself down into the dark hole, into the welcoming blackness below, cooler temperatures away from the hateful fire in the sky. You smell something burning and you realize it's yourself. Campbell, close the door behind us and follow us down. And I jump down. Sir. He does as he's told. You're at the bottom of the tunnel. Hey, hey. See? See? Same as fire. Same as fire. Yeah. yeah. No big deal. You're good. Yeah. Now, a question. Do you try to stay awake and keep moving? Or do you fall back asleep here? I think it's safe if we keep moving. If we can keep moving, we should get somewhere safer. <laughs> Let's go. Let's try and get somewhere safer. Somewhere safer. I pick, I pick up is, safe. Is, so. is my place closer or is the college closer? College is m much closer. Than college. So in order to remain awake an additional scene, you'll need to make a humanity roll. Okay. <laughs> Nothing added to it. Regular vampire dice. All your unspent, undamaged humanity. Three. That's exactly what you need. Come on, three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> now you cannot re-roll a tracker. Two. Check. Oh, cannot spend willpower to re-roll. Two. A tracker check. What you can do is spend a willpower to push yourself forward for as long as you can. Then I'll okay. do that. Okay. And take the superficial damage to the willpower. You're spending it. Annabelle and Campbell press on. You make it perhaps halfway there before Jasper simply stops, unable to remain awake, unable to force the vitae through his undead body. A moment longer, he simply sinks down onto the concrete floor of the tunnel. Jasper, Jasper, you okay? What's wrong with him? What? What? What can't? What? Can he not? Can he? Can he go? He's supposed to be sleeping now. We're all supposed to be uh, sleeping uh, now. We, well, we're gonna have to carry him. Where you want to go? I got him. I got him. Hold the safe. Oof. Ah, this thing's heavy. Thanks. Okay, I got you. It's okay. All right. Okay. No roll required. 
your inhuman supernatural strength allows you to half carry, half drag Jasper through the tunnel. Come on, it's okay. Let's hope you remember the way. All right. Oh, I wish there were rats. Now, after several blocks of screaming terror, the fire is no longer a danger to you and your beasts feel safe. They feel safe. You begin to come back to yourselves. The interior of the limousine is badly damaged. The upholstery, the woodwork, the fittings. You just, you just you, you had to tear up the car, didn't you? You just had to tear I up the limousine. I hate this car anyways. We're alive because of this car. <laughs> It's going to need some repair work now. Does it? Does it? Does it, though? I actually really like this redecoration of it. I promised you you could redecorate it. This wasn't what I had in mind. It, Not like this. It's she, you know what? Let's just get to the college. I, I don't even want to argue about I this. text, we're out. Let us know if you guys made it. Who do you text? The two of you, the group text. Okay. <laughs> mm, the group text. I couldn't now, before now. Do you wish to remain awake for the ride to the college? I, I would like to make sh I would like to lay eyes on the college and know it's safe. So yes, I would continue okay. to try to stay awake. Once again, multiple things happen at once. First, each of you takes another point of aggravated damage from prolonged exposure to the obscured sunlight seeping through the darkened windows. <coughs> it's been a long time since you had to endure sunlight, and you had hoped never to have to face it again. The next thing that needs to happen is you need to make that humanity roll to remain awake now that the crisis has passed. So it's all of your undamaged, unspent humanity. No other dice. You're looking for three. Three successes exactly. Exactly. One, two, three, four. Four successes. Both of you are able to remain awake, fighting against the pull of the day sleep that threatens to drag you back down into the darkness, all the way to Griffith College in East Hollywood. You roll into the garage in the building that holds your sanctum. Campbell asks, where to, sir? Do we just wait it out? <sighs> We've got hours to go. We're uh, we're not gonna last too much longer. Mm -mm. Uh, I'll take care of it. Stay with us. Uh, we should stay here in the car. If something yeah. else happens, he can move the car. I agree. We're gonna we're gonna stay in the car. The Jasper and, and Annabelle, they're they're not they're not answering, but they're probably underground. They're that was the plan. Oh. They're hmm. I'm sure they're underground. Hmm. We're gonna. As you slowly sink into slumber, Campbell retrieves some blankets from the trunk of the limo to cover you both. And the last thing that you see as your eyes close is Campbell standing outside the limousine, alert, injured, but still watchful. Dragging Jasper with the guard's help. It's a long, difficult slog, but your undead strength maintains throughout the journey. Finally, after what seems like hours, you make it to your destination. And you go through the access door from the tunnel into the private garage underneath the sanctum. That's where you see the limousine. Oh my God. It's a wreck. The paint <gasps> is burned, a headlight is busted. It's dented. Something very, very heavy has fallen on the trunk. Oh Campbell is standing outside it, watchful. He makes a move to draw his gun when the access door opens. It's us, he, it's us. He recognizes you and rushes over to help, taking the weight of Jasper with you. Thanks. Did anybody else come with you? 
anybody, yeah. any of my guys. Yeah. He recognizes and acknowledges the guard that came with you. Ah, uh, I'm so glad to see you, Lawrence. You're gonna have to help me here. Anybody else? I, Did you see anybody? This, I didn't see anybody. No. I'm sorry. No. I'm so sorry. Is are they okay? They're 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 a little uh, they're a little beat up, but they're they're gonna be okay. Do you want to wait in the limo with them? You got you got a couple hours. Yeah, I think we better sleep it off. I'll be here when you wake up. Thanks. I I'm so sorry. Thanks. He opens the door to the limousine. Inside, you see Nellie and Victor together Aww. in one of the seats under a blanket. Absolutely cold and comatose. Well, tuckered out. They do not stir. They don't blink. You might as well not be there. Into the limo you go. Campbell helps put Jasper on the seat. And he covers both of you with a blanket as well. He shuts the door. And you let yourselves sink into the dark, dreamless sleep of the day. Time passes, and the next thing you know, you are awake. <laughs> and you know instinctively, as a predator knows, that your time has come again, that it is night, that the sun is gone from the sky. Are you two all right? What happened to the inside of this car? I it needed a refurbishment, don't worry about I it. I think we happened to the inside of this car. Okay. You guys okay? We got the safe. No. Are you? That's uh, good. As a point, did we take any damage for going out in the sun? Um, you each took one aggravated point of damage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to mending and healing here. As soon as you are. Yeah, we did great. Fine. We went on a walk. It was nice. I haven't been out in the daytime in a long time. You were out in the sun? It was fine. We're good. Sun, we pretty sun? much were too. I, I mean, but we had uh, not. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, okay, it's sh shitty Camarilla architecture that they couldn't put decent tent on their own armored limo, but to their credit, they probably didn't think they'd go out at high fucking noon either. I, I reach for my phone. I'm like, hey, where's Campbell? Campbell, I, I, I call him. Uh, yeah. The limo door First fire, huh? opens a crack. Sir? Sir, are you all right? No. What the hell happened? It'll, it heals eventually. No. Campbell takes that as permission to open the limo door. His arm is in a sling. He's bandaged some of his other wounds. Got a lot of cuts and bruises, but at least he's cleaned up a little bit. He's no longer wearing his customary black suit. Instead, he's got a dark sweatshirt and jeans and running shoes. Sir, how are you feeling? Miss Nelly? Uh, why are you not wearing a suit? Well, I think we can forgive him. Are you okay? Did any of your people make it out? Should we talk here, or would you like to go up to the sanctum, sir? I, uh, <laughs> I, re I, actually, I pull open the bag of the hunter's weapons and I take the other pistol. And I guess, again, I, we always, we had stakes for the holy, but whatever's left, I disseminate just so it's on our persons. And I'm like, you're, yeah. you're divvying up the contents of just the, carry the safe uh, hunter's upstairs. stash amongst you? Because I don't know what's waiting for us here on the campus. Mm. So I now have both guns on my person, yes. And bring the bag. We don't need to bring the safe, we just need what was in the safe. Okay. So, uh, yes, and then up to our meeting place. Also, I text, Mar I text Ramona that we're under attack. That's all I text Ramona that you're under attack? We're under attack. 
Okay. Anybody else while you're making your way? Where are the weird sisters? They should be in their safe haven. Yeah, they have a place in the They valley. have a place now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They weren't staying? Okay, just yeah. to be sure. As far as I know, the only person here is Ramona. I'm going to text X to... I know that yeah, he hasn't really been returning my texts lately, but I just want to let him know. What do you text to X? Um, Maharaja attacked. You safe? A few moments later, he texts back. All good here. You okay? I'm still undead. He texts back, me too, five exclamation points, and a smiley face. (laughs) Everyone else, question mark. They're fine. (laughs) Let's, uh. Um, I'm also texting Greg. Daffodil. Texting Daffodil Mm -hmm. or Greg? Daffodil. Daffodil. So, what do you text him? Uh, Maharaja under attack. Find out about this quick. <sighs> See if he can find out if that was the hunters or the cam that hit us. They probably got access to the same weapon stash, so who knows, but it would be, that's going to affect what happens next. I text back, is this your kind? He says, stand by. Need me? Question mark. Always. Exclamation point. Heart smiley. Hmm. Ramona doesn't respond to your text. Hmm. Even though I know I won't get a response, I send a message to Eva that just says, The sun hurts more than it used to. You are correct. There is no response. Annabelle, can you text Ramona? She's not replying to me, but this might be like her bullshit passive aggression. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Nellie? Your phone rings. It is Daffodil's ringtone. Pick it up. Hey, hey. What's you up? good? Uh, not really, but I will be soon. Hey, it's a mess. No shit. Yeah, there's some media reports. Ooh. Ooh, media reports? What are they saying? Gas explosion? It's bullshit. Gas explosion. Hey, uh... Tell Big Daddy there that uh, his place is a loss. Um, what the fire didn't get, the water damaged well. Okay. I don't know if this was. A, I don't know who it was. You want me to poke into it? Yes, I'd appreciate if you find out if it was your people or not. How hard do you want me to press? <sighs> do a cursory check. Don't press too hard if it's too difficult to get the information. So, don't call in any favors. No. Just a cursory check, Daffodil. Are you sure? This is a pretty major hit. Yeah, but if we press too hard... Mm Mm-hmm. We could get hit for it harder. Cursory check. If there's information there, we'll find it fast. I gotta tell ya. Victor's dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of fatalities. <sighs> Took out some buildings in the block too. This is a this is a big one. Look, I don't have to investigate to know it wasn't a gas leak. This was like high explosive shit. I can see that just from just from here on the television. Is this something that your people would use, explosive? Hey, we'll use anything up to and including, you know, vampire drones if we can figure out how to make them. Oh shit, I'm not supposed to say that no. on the phone, am I? No. Damn. No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just need to know if this was your people, Daffodil. How would they know? 
Look, we didn't leave anything left of that place. I Are told you sure? You. Hey, I told you. I told you. She burned it down, and they all... No, we didn't leave anything. There was nothing to find. This must have... <sighs> okay. Okay. And they didn't follow us. I know that for a fact. Okay. Um... Stand by. I need to regroup with uh, the rest of the family and find out what they want to do, but I have my ideas. Stand by. Copy that. Okay. His ringtone is toxic by Britney Spears? Can we not go into my ringtone right now? <sighs> I text Ramona, Maharaja, burn down. Stay safe. She texts you back. Sucks! Exclamation <laughs> point. Out of town for a few nights. San Diego. Got to check on something. Uh, not to pry, but San Diego? Smiley face. I send her a gif of Frodo saying, keep your secrets. She texts back, don't worry. Got a friend along for the ride. Back in a few. Okay. XO, XO. Stay safe. Stay very, 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 very safe. So, who was it? Well, there's only other one other enemy. Well, one other point of order. If Ramona's not here, that means no one has eyes on our people. True. I take out my phone and I, I text Mark. And I text him, uh, I'm gonna be by campus later. Are you around, buddy? He's not really. What? I think I think he might have dropped out of school. You know, this might be the one single solitary night of my life that that's actually good news. <laughs> if he wasn't here, that's actually probably ideal. Can you just? Hear his voice, just, because if they're hitting us, they're hitting us everywhere. Just, your son does text you back a few minutes later. The message is, can't meet tonight, sorry. Another time then, you good? It's a long delay, but he does return the text message and the message returned is, yeah, I'm fine. You? Usually he's not too receptive to my messages, though. Yeah. I'm like, eh. He's seeming unnecessary. Do you have a code word or the, the, your your activism stuff? Did you have a thing that you said when you were compromised? Um, Do you have a safe word? Your pineapple chicken strips? <laughs> oh, right. Like, safe word. Um, not really. We didn't, have, we didn't have one for activism stuff. Well... We need a we're compromised work, so I don't know if that's really him or not. You know what? You know what? Call him. I call him. You're actually going to call him. Don't just text him. I call him. Oh, my God. 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 I just need to hear his voice. Okay. I need to hear his voice. Just before it goes to voicemail, he answers. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You, uh, you good, man? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be? Uh, I guess I can't, um, I can't do subterfuge to, like, detect if anything's wrong, like, the, this... It would require you to be able to see him. Right. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, I was just wondering if I, if you wanted to get together with your two brothers. That seem good? Who is this really? It's my dad's number. I mean, I just want to make sure that you're good. Like, you're acting all square. Quite frankly, you're being all nice to me. Like, I just wanted to make sure that everything's all right with you, man. You, just... know, you know Isaiah's on his way back. He told me he texted you. Cool, 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 cool. Hey, did you, uh, you see the news? No. Some crazy shit happened in one of my properties, so I'm going to have to go look into that. Is it bad? The worst. So, good, uh, good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, 
Uh, no, that sounds about right. That's very own brand. So, uh, yeah, you just uh, maybe stay clear for a couple of days. It's going to be paparazzi, a lot of insane stuff. I don't want you to be on TMZ. You know what I mean? You know how the vultures are. Thanks for looking out for me. I always do. He hangs up. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Apparently Isaiah's on the way back. That's awesome. Needed that. That's cool. That's the thing I needed to happen. Cool. Mark has two brothers? He doesn't. It was a code word. Oh. He was trying to see if he was... Yeah, I get it. I just okay. don't listen to your family stuff, so... It's, you know, no one does. It's fine. Yeah. <sighs> Anybody else we need so to So I haven't on? talked to Mark for about two and a half months because there was deep deep concern on all sides that I would jeopardize him and the masquerade. Um, and you can just call him up. I told you, I see him all the time. Just, he doesn't know he sees. I see him all the time. Yeah, and that's still real messed up. To, to my credit, to my credit, if someone hadn't just dropped a building on us, I wouldn't have bothered. I had to make sure he was fine. Do you, are there any calls you need to make? Anybody else you need to hear their voice? Well, I would have liked to talk to him. Eleanor? I mean, you could technically still call him. It's not like he gets one phone call a day. <laughs> it's true, but we do know he's alive now. Great, okay, so I have permission to call him then. Great, great, great. Let's be honest, if I told you you didn't have permission to call him, would you have stopped calling him? A guy that I had a loose connection with was <laughs> run over by a car, so I mean, I, I was pretty worried about it, yeah. You know what, he's still alive, thank you. I appreciate that, I truly do. But right now, if he's good, we need to focus on the next thing. Okay. What's our next move? Uh, the next move is probably mending some of your injuries. <sighs> You're all injured to one degree or another. Some of you have taken aggravated damage from sunlight and fire. Now, let's take care of the uh, superficial damage first, right? So anyone who wants to heal superficial damage can rouse the blood to heal that according to your blood potency. Okay. I do it, but I get hungrier. Oh, same. I only took a, a one point of aggravated, so. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to the aggravated in a moment. Nelly also took some superficial damage. Yeah. So you make a rouse check. Yeah, good. Uh, you succeeded? Yeah. Okay, so the beast reminds you that it's there, but does not rise to the surface, and you heal a point of superficial damage. Now, aggravated. If you want to heal it, and you don't have to, you can suffer with it until you're ready, it requires three rouse checks. Doesn't matter if you pass or fail, you'll still heal one aggravated damage, but you may increase your hunger substantially. I see you reaching for your dice. I'm gonna try and heal at least one, seeing as I have two of them. Mm -hmm. A familiar situation for you. Yeah. The sun is the indirect sunlight. We both took one. Oh, the other was superficial. I get two points hungrier. One point hungrier. One point for Victor. I am at hunger four, just so you know. Three, three restaurants. <sighs> Failed the first one. Oh, but you still roll all three because it works. All three you just might get hungrier. Okay. Succeed. Are, are you all right? Oh, I'm great. I feel great. I feel great. I feel great. Don't lie to him. You're not great. You're never great. You haven't been great since you breathed, and you weren't great then either. <laughs> Come on, let's go get something. You got like you got like I'm three gonna, willing donors here. You know they would. You I'm know go. they would. Come on. I'm gonna go for a minute. Tell me where you guys are going. This sucks. You know, can we come with you? That's probably the safest place in the whole damn city right now. <laughs> I respect you. If you say no, no. But your place is a fortress, man. <sighs> 
You're making him uncomfortable. Let's not do that. Uh, Nelly, did you attempt to heal aggravated? I did. Uh, one fail. One fail. Bring your total hunger up to two? Yes. Okay. So it's manageable. Irritating, but manageable. Uh, there's something I need to do, though. Um, activate the blush of life. Let's check. Now I'm at three. I, uh... I was wondering... I was wondering when you would call on me. You're always with me. I need a, uh, a nondescript wall, something that doesn't look like anything in particular. Like, um, just something where I, I need a, a background that's not gonna clearly be the college. Or... A neutral background. Yes. Well, um, in the sanctum, there are plaster walls, there are brick walls, there are paneled walls. The hallway is a neutral colored, sort of ugly off-white. I'll do uh, any any office room, you know, you know that kind of mm -hmm. like mother of pearlish white that like every office wall ever sure, has. every institutional wall everywhere. And I turn on my live stream. Now, let's make sure I know where everybody is. You are in this room. Are I don't want them on the camera. Is anyone else in the room with you? I sit very still. I, I mean, I, I don't just ambush them with it, so I, I make sure they're not in it. You are trying to make sure that you are the only figure in the live stream. Yes. Okay. I sit very still and I, and I cloak of shadows, which doesn't require a rouse check. No rouse check, and it also uh, works uh, on electronic devices. It does, so for just you. in case. Mm -hmm. So, the live stream is on. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I am down in Atlanta, Georgia, recruiting some new talent for our big opening coming up soon. I just, I got word about the building. We're looking into it. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your prayers. I'm fine. My people are fine. I'm going to get back in town. We're going to come back bigger and better. But thank you so much. I just wanted you to know I'm fine. And I stop it. Does anybody check the news? Yes. Hmm. So... Local television news does carry the story. Local newspapers, their online editions, have the story as well. The facts are inconclusive. What they're reporting currently is that there was a suspected gas main explosion, either at the Maharaja or one of the buildings adjacent to it. Uh, combustible materials in the garage of the Maharaja caught fire in addition to some cleaning chemicals or cleaning supplies in the nearby buildings. The building is a total loss. There are definitely fatalities, but they are not releasing the number or the names until the next of kin have been notified. Uh, the whereabouts of property owner, Victor Temple, are at this time unknown, but authorities are trying to reach him. Which, as you know, Victor, because your phone hasn't been ringing, is not true. Well, listen, I text Fiorenza, and I say, um, I just text her, was this the tower's doing? She texts back, are you free for a call? <laughs> for you, always. The phone rings. I pick it up, but I, I, Put it on speakerphone. I say, you're on speakerphone, ma'am. Victor, my boy. What is the meaning of your question? Uh, it's been a very long day, oddly enough. My first in a very long time. Uh, someone hit one of my establishments while we were inside of it. How distressing. Quite. Are you uninjured? Only my pride. I see. And your associates? Hale and Hardy. Am I speaking to them now? Yes. Hello, Fiorenza. Good evening, Mr. Jasper. Good evening, Mr. Fiorenza. Jasper Hartwood. Good evening, Miss Annabelle. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Griffith. Hello, Fiorenza. Now, what exactly has happened, my boy? Really, ma'am, so I don't waste your time. I'm just trying to figure out if it was Vannevar that hit my establishment or perhaps more institutionalized interests. Hmm. Whom have you offended this week? 
<laughs> Who haven't we? Is it Friday already? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, we were busy with uh, what was supposed to be a big reveal in a couple of days. I, I don't know that we've done anything out of the ordinary in the last three days. Mm. No, nothing out of the ordinary. I'm about to say something that comes very difficult to me. I don't know. Well, I appreciate your candor. I know you're always careful, but... But I will find out. You may rest assured, my boy. Thank you, ma'am. Before we say farewell, hmm. I am led to understand that you had a chance meeting with some kindred in the city recently. A Mr. Rychek and a Mr. Sanchez. Uh, they seem like they were, had a vested interest in a situation that I too had a vested interest in, yes. Are they associates of yours? Not as such, but I think you will find they are far more interested than the prince in keeping things under control. You might possibly consider contacting them in the wake of this inconvenience. Interesting. I'm all for diplomacy, as you well know. Uh, would you know how I might get a message to them? I dare say I can arrange it. Wait and for them to contact you. <laughs> I think you're the only person in this world that could make me that offer and I'd accept it, ma'am. So if you say so, yes, I will. One last thing. Mr. Hartwood. Oh, Jesus. Yes? Are you in good condition this time? I am a lot, well, relatively unharmed. You will soon learn that Vannevar's court yet awaits your answer to the summons placed upon you. Fine. I'll give them their answer. Good evening. Thank you, ma'am. She signs off. Bone goes dead. Did Sanchez and Rychek? do this? No. I feel she wouldn't have said talk to him if she thought they'd done it. Mm. Keeping order. What does that mean? They're I make this looking to uphold the status quo more so than Vanavar is. You know? They were pretty <sighs> accommodating in the Boyle Heights cleanup. But to what cost? They haven't named their price yet. Look, I mean, they didn't do any do any favors for us. Yeah, we kind of took care of it before they got there. Yeah, they were looking out for themselves, but sorry, Jasper, you were saying something. This place, we don't know if it's safe, where we are right now. We don't know who knows this is our place, who knows what. And you all need to not be seen. What do you propose? So we're going to go somewhere quietly for you guys to regroup under the condition that there are no judgments to what may or may not be seen there. And we have to go the way I say we go. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You want us to go down to your house? It's the safest place. It's the safest place for you to be right now. Uh, but <sighs> it's the safest place. I mean, my my ha my haven is. No, it's it's not. We, no. We did. Question: Does Campbell fit my feeding requirements? The definition of the feeding requirement based on your clan and my own personal proclivities is pretty specific, but I think it is safe to say you could drink his blood. My friend, I'm afraid I need to call upon you for one small inconvenience one more time today. Well, I'm yours to command, sir. 
this isn't a command, it's a request, but I need just a little bit. Last time we went where we're going, things went poorly for me, and I need to have my head on straight. It would, it would be my honor, sir. I'm going to stop by the coffee shop. On the way? Yeah. I take so, just so one point. Unbuttons his shirt cuff, rolls up his sleeve, bows his head, and offers you his wrist. I put my hand like, and I take just one point. Just Sink your fangs into the flesh of your loyal servant who would give his life for yours in a heartbeat. And you drink the restorative crimson liquid that is life for you. It's sanguine, stable, confident, and loyal. It is power. You may remove a hunger die. Uh, when when this is over, we might need to get a, a couple days free yeah. of this. But we're gonna the guys we lost. We're gonna take care of their families. We're gonna uh, look after of, them. of course, of course, sir. Uh, whatever you say. Can we assume that you close the wound? I do. Uh, keep an eye on this place for me. Stay with the car. Uh, the car. I have something else that needs to be done if we're going to do this correctly, and we're going to do this with the highest chance that no one knows where the fuck we're going. That car needs to drive somewhere else mm. for a little while. Smart. Well, we did say we'd look into Long Beach. <laughs> yeah, we did. And then we're gonna take a cab. I thought we just like underground, like we're not gonna. We need to get there quicker than that. A cab? A cab. Can we get UberX? I know. No. Annabelle, you intend to get some nourishment. Is anybody else feeding Nelly? <laughs> I'm calling upon my herd. Any fashion students that are anywhere near? Ah, uh, so let's do this. <laughs> Fine, take your time. It's great. Annabelle, <laughs> are you calling on your friend? Yeah, I'm gonna go text Tammy. <laughs> She's gonna meet you there. She's excited to hear from you. She's really happy that you're back in touch. Awesome, see you soon. <sighs> so, Just... you're going to the coffee shop on campus. Grounds for coffee? Yeah. You haven't been Just... here in a while. Mm, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. Tammy meets you there. She's excited to see you. She is really eager to talk to you about everything the group has been up to, about their most recent protests, about all the evidence of, that they've uncovered of further corruption on campus, their plans for the next um, demonstration. But you have one thing on your mind, of course. She's eager to help. She understands. She knows. She knows it's not your fault, and she's happy to help you. So you find a secluded bench near the coffee shop, but out of sight, out of prying eyes. And anyone who passes by is simply going to see two students enjoying the night together. How much of her blood do you take? Just a little bit to take the edge off. Just a tiny bit. Just enough. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. So, you drink, you take what you need. Her blood is melancholy. She's been sad lately. Out of sorts, anxious. But this, for her, is bliss. This is easily the best night of her week. And she's only too happy mm. to know that she's helping you. I lick her wrist close, and I ask, Tammy, are you okay? It's been a rough week. Classes stress, job stress, family stress. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the end of the year. Yeah. Look, you've gone through a lot of bullshit, and... You are so incredible and strong, and 
just make sure to take some time for you, okay? Because I promise I'll you, I'll try. classes I'll try. seem so important now, but they are not going to be the biggest thing that you remember from this time in your life. After finals. After yeah. finals. Can I, can I tell everybody I saw you? They're going to be so excited. I... Maybe you should keep it to yourself. Yeah? For now. I, you I know, mean, things are... Everybody's doing really well. I mean, Maria's always asking about you. I know. Juan and Mark and... Mark asking about me? Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, it's your business. I know you're, I know you're doing important things. Yeah, it's... It's for the greater good, right? Trust me, it'll be safer for everybody involved if okay. you don't say anything. Well, look, I gotta go. I got a study date, but look, you let me know if there's anything else you need. Okay, thank you. And same with you too, okay? Okay, okay. Nellie. Your little friends are always happy to hear from you. Oh, good. I was actually looking for a particular one with um, ombre purple hair, Diane. Diane. Mm hmm She, of course, joined you at Club Maharaja for that um, album drop night not so long ago. Excellent. So, Diane drops everything. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Where how's, do you meet her? How's your fashion project? You know, I've been having some trouble with um, with the lines. Maybe you could take a look at them. If I could just show you my portfolio. Of I mean, course. just uh, just for a little bit. I know I would do better. Of course. Can we step into my office real fast? Absolutely. Excellent. So you're meeting her at the fashion school? Yeah. On campus? Yeah, it's not the far from it. Department yeah, of Fashion not, Design. It's not far from our area. So... How much of her blood do you take? Just one. She is in your arms instantly. She remembers the last time. Uh, there was music, there was champagne, and there isn't any of that now. No. But it's just as blissful for you both. For her, it's mm. the closest thing she can get to paradise. Oh. For you, it's everything that you need mm. to be who and what you are. Oh, Diane, you are so incredibly kind. Thank you. How much of her blood do you take? Just one dot. I'm gonna close the wound. You're gonna close the wound? Mm -hmm. Remove a hunger dye. Yeah. Do you look at her sketches? Of course, for two seconds, and I erase some of them. Re like sketch, and I said, I will be back soon, darling, but work on this. Um, this pattern seems a little bit off. Can I, can I call you? Can we, can we maybe do coffee next week? You should talk to my assistant. My assistant will be much more helpful than I am. Unfortunately, I don't necessarily have my phone with me and I can't put it into my schedule. She looks disappointed, but she nods and reluctantly leaves you. Excellent, I'm so, gonna get out of there fast. <laughs> everybody has nourished themselves. Big. While the two of them are gone, I see that he's clearly hurting, and I, uh, Jasper. What? Take some, dude. Because if something goes wrong down there, I can't have you freak out underground and kill us all. So I'd rather, I won't, we won't tell them. No, no, you're, uh, listen, uh, no offense to you, but you're fucking the last person in this world that I would want to be bonded to. And I'm not gonna do that. That seems like an appropriate place to pause our story for a few moments. Hello, and welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, LA by Night, Season three, episode one, Dead Road. Our coterie has made a plan. They intend to visit the haven of Jasper. Now, getting there from Griffith College, assuming you're taking a vehicle, cabs were mentioned as 
ride shares. You also have the services of Campbell, who um, was somehow in two places at once during our first scene. Maybe he's a mage, I'm not sure. Maybe there are two Campbells. Maybe it's the Campbell brothers, mm -hmm. could be, the security team. Uh, you also have Lawrence, his um, right. attache or assistants, who also survived the fire and helped you get here in the limo. What's the mode of transportation? My concern is that we don't want that limo going anywhere near where we're going. Valid. Seeing as you plowed it out of the building as it was on fire. Needs must be done, yes. Uh, so we can either walk through the sewers, or we can make the car drive somebody else and take a cab. Well, what's worse, a cab or a trek through the sewers? I leave it to you. Oh, jeez. I call out that I have a number on my phone that's a, a little bit higher end cab service. Mm, private car. Yeah. He is overjoyed to hear from you. Completely negate my phone. Hey! Hi. Um, requesting your services to uh, get. Settle. Settle. Anywhere, any place, any time. Is this a party bus? Oh, uh. Is um, it, uh, uh, they're going to be models. Pick up the phone, Nelly. Uh, I can hear him through not speaker phone. Hey, Nelly, our ride's here. We're cool. Okay, never mind. Oh. oh. The Next time. Okay. The point is to take a ride that no one would expect us to take. <sighs> I mean, I, I know you're not used to having to, like, bring this down, bring it down. I know. I thought we were just going to walk through the sewers. It's cab or sewers. Let's take a cab. You need to get there. I was trying. Uh, to get yeah, there. we're in a hurry. Uh, but Campbell, remember, sir, <laughs> I can't drive you. My arm. No, no, you're good. Uh, take, take this. This, this, this guy's name's Campbell too. That's weird. Um, no, this is this is Lawrence, sir. Oh, you know, it's been a long day. But remember, we said we were gonna look into Long Beach for the ministry. Maybe you guys. I, take... I recall some mention of it, sir. Yeah. Well, we just want to see what what's what's happening in the streets down there. So maybe drive down to Long Beach. Just take a look around. You don't have to do anything, and you have to stop. Just uh, tell me if you spot anything unusual happening in the streets, near the docks, near downtown. Kind of kill two birds with one stone here. You want us both to go, sir? I mean, uh, if you want to go back and poke around Maharaja and try and find out what happened, but honestly, I trust your eyes, so. You've done a lot today, so. I'm going to need some rest at some point, sir. You know what? Take the night. And uh, Lawrence, you drive around, but you know, drive casual. <laughs> he seems really puzzled by the instructions, but you can tell he's gonna do his best to carry them out. <laughs> uh, Campbell, could you find out if, if Bailey's all right? You know, well. Sir, he's in the hospital. <sighs> you know what? Get some rest, and then you set about making sure that these guys' families Everybody that got I've hurt. already done so, sir. Thanks. I have uh, taken the liberty of accessing the emergency funds that you set aside. Yeah. One Everything other thing. will get taken care of. We need to start looking into moving some of that stuff to cash. Banks are vulnerable. Not really my area, sir. Yeah, but, you know, we'll make some calls. Yeah. Hey, good job. I took the liberty of um, phoning your attorney, sir. You're being looked for. There are press inquiries, well, rather a lot of them. I gave myself a small cover story, so it'll hold long and as long as I need it to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to tell you where we're going, so uh, I'll hit you up when we come out. And if I don't hear from you, sir? Get well, revenge. <laughs> who do I hit? You know, um, you know what, Campbell? Uh, I'm going to uh, dominate, uh, mesmerize. No role required on your own thrall. You've done a great job, and I want you to feel really good about what you've accomplished today. But I'm all right. What's the specific command you want to suggest to him? Feel good about the job you've done today. Mm. Dominate controls the mind, and presence is the realm of emotion. So <clears throat> he can act like he's proud and confident, 
you might not actually feel it. For now, that'll be good enough. <laughs> and we'll get in the cab. Duly noted. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Whether or not it does, I don't know. So, Lawrence and he depart in the limousine. Lawrence will drop him off on the way. Be safe. Uh, you can tell the cabbie whatever you need. Yeah. He won't remember the trip, so. So we're calling a cab. Yeah. I just... I open my phone. The flip phone. The flip phone. Mm -hmm. And I just dial a generic cab company. Well, despite the dominance of the uh, rideshare industry, there are still taxi cabs in Los Angeles. Great. You have a cab meet you on Out, campus? Uh, yeah, just in like the regular, the most non-conspicuous part of the parking lot. <laughs> and cab I will, will be there soon. Okay. Now listen, we get home, I'm gonna have to feed. You all will wait in the living room. I will go feed and then we can figure out what we're going to do after that. Here is money for the cab because I don't know if any of you actually carry cash money. They still take cash? I'm sure cabs still take cash, don't they? No record, makes sense. Hmm. Hey, Yeah. Okay. can I go to the closet? Because you know that black thing that, uh, that for the Stop. For the club, no. He, it, he needs to go. No, I mean, we're gonna go. I'm just saying, can I borrow another outfit? I think this is Jasper's way of letting us go and he can be, meet us there, is that No, right? no, we're I'm we're taking the cab. I need to get there faster or else I'm gonna eat someone. Let's Fair go. Enough. So, just know that uh, I don't really want to answer any questions once I get there. You gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. And just stay in the room that I put you in. Sure. Thank you. That seems like everyone that goes there does, right? <laughs> uh, clever, Victor, yeah. clever. I mean, if not now, when, right? Let's go. Yeah. Can I assume that you have all accessed the um, clothing that you keep stored in the sanctum at the college to give yourself fresh attire? Yes. So that you don't Hopefully look like something you've less stumbled out of a fire? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. But you're keeping your jacket. Keep I mean, okay. what's a little smoke? What's a few burn marks? It probably smells better than it's it did. Fine. Yeah, the, the, you smell oaky now versus like peppery like you did before. I have to make the walk to the cab visibly. Yes. When uh, we approach the cab, I turn on awe. Cabby's eyes are riveted on you. I open the door. No, 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 let me do that. No, 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 I got it, I got it. We're working on some effects makeup here. It's very fragile stuff. Just, you know what? I'm gonna need you to sign some NDA. Just keep eyes on me, buddy. Eyes on me. Yeah, okay? look, just where you guys wanna go. Yeah. Where do you wanna go? I give, I give, I give the address. Mm -hmm. Closest place, to, closest address to where I live. Yeah. Okay. It's a night shoot. That's why we're doing the cab. It's low hey, pro. Hey, look, it's none of my business. Yeah, no, we're good. You, you guys ready? Yeah. Mm. Let's go. I, Let's go. Linger with it. Yeah. You look familiar. I get that a lot. Yeah. I've seen you somewhere. Yeah. Are you in the ball. movies? Mm hmm. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go. What you been in? This cab. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. He drives. He spends a lot of the time looking in the rearview mirror at you as though he's trying to place you. Mm hmm. about 20 minutes. He takes you to a gas station at a particular corner near the LA River on the east side of Griffith Park. It's not the valley, but it's not not the valley. Here, you wanna hear, this is it? Yeah, and hey man, just do me one quick favor. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna use Dominate, Submerge Directive. If you wanna talk about this tonight, don't. 
Talk about what? Can you give him a happy memory? Actually, I can't. Oh. <laughs> I leave some cash on are the we, seat. Are we stopped? Yeah, make the rouse check for Mesmerize. What? <laughs> nope. Failure. Mm hmm. You are right back where you started on your hunger. <laughs> the downward spiral begins again. Did you miss me? It does not. I missed, I I missed you. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're on the I clock. I really clock. missed you, boss. <sighs> Yeah, no. Why don't we eat this guy? It's the only way to be sure. It, nope, we're good. We're good. No, I, he, he could eat him. Then he would never tell anybody. No, he's not going to tell anybody now. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Cool, 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 cool. Let's go. I've been out the cab. This is like as soon as it stopped. Mm -hmm. Out. <laughs> out. Not really a comfortable ride. Oh, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. And it's gross and not flattering and fashionable. Ew. Mm. Thank yeah. you. Have a nice evening. <laughs> yeah. Are you in the movies too? No. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Did you leave him a tip? Hmm? I pay him well. Okay. Don't want to give him any reason to complain. All right, follow me. Jasper, you lead the way to the end of the parking lot that's attached to the gas station through a hole cut into a chain link fence down a set of concrete steps overgrown with weeds and strewn with trash down the embankment to the stinking water flow that is the LA River. It's a stench. You've all been here before. This is the front door to Jasper's Haven. Oh, that's From the outside, it looks like an ordinary City Municipal Works access cover. But you know what's on the other side. At least the door's repaired. Yes, that's fine. Craftsmanship is back on the hinges. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do that for the record. I know the werewolf did. He did. Yeah, the werewolf did. Yeah, I'm yeah, still happened. not entirely clear how he got down there, but that's for a different time and not important. That's not now, yeah. Werewolves. I unlock the door. Ellie? Is it possible to activate um, heightened senses, but rather heighten them? Can I dampen uh, smell? Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Okay. Amplifying the senses works only in one direction. Okay. I can try and dominate you into nose blindness if no, you like that. Fine. <laughs> Fortunately, on the other side of the door, because of the nearly airtight seal, when it's closed behind you, the smell is gone. <laughs> now you've been in here before. This is the lobby, as it were. The well-appointed, clean, very modern dwelling that looks like it could be furnished from any big box store. It looks unremarkably unlike Jasper. But where do we go from here? So... I take you through the entry hall. It's a short little hallway that leads into a st how do they put it in the book? A uh, a wonder of modern design. It is a nice, but everything's built into the walls, kind of simple living space, living room sort of room. Attached to that, there is another door that splits off to your right once you come in that has a rather large, what looks like a library. Now, I'd like to make the point that you saw none of these things when you were here the first time. You didn't know they were here. Yeah. It looks they were there. hidden from your view. So we're in a new area, not the, previ the previous area didn't it's change. It's the same else. door just led to a different room. What? It's oh. as though the rooms have moved. So all that Harry Potter stuff is in here too? Oh. No, this is more mundane. Now, your library, mm -hmm. what's it like? Um, it's fairly large, but not gigantic. It's, you know, Got a lot of rows of 
different bookshelves and all, all kind of circling the wall. It's a rather round room. The shelves circle the walls and there's um, one table and a chair because no one else but me is here. <laughs> and there's a couple of lamps in there. It's, it's, it's lit but not bright. It's moody. Um, but there's all sorts of different volumes and tomes and thing, things like mm. that. It's a rather well-stocked collection. And then there is a second door that's closed that leads off the living room area. Now, if you would all please confine yourself to this room or the library, that would be preferable. There is there is a couch and there is a coffee table and uh, a laptop on the coffee table. And just generic sort of living room furniture. Um, would you call it comfortable? Comfortable would be a word, yes. Mm. And um, I will be back in a moment and I head off the door. May I look at your books? Of Sure. When I open the door, as I go through it, you can see another hallway that curves around to the right. Shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind me. Do you secure it? I, no, I just shut the door. And just shut it. I'm not really, I'm focused on a specific thing right now. As I understand it, <clears throat> you're a little hungry. Yeah. Five bucks says if we open that door, it's not the hallway anymore. I think we should probably just leave him alone. No, I'm reading. I don't want to see what's in there. When Victor examines your library, what types of books do um, you find there? There are history books. History. There's books on languages, mm. uh, but a lot of it is dedicated to the study of the occult, be it phony or not. So you have a number of treatises on uh, magic mm -hmm. and the supernatural. Yeah. Um, maybe some rare volumes. Yes. Is everything in English or are there books in other languages? There's books in Latin and there's books in Greek. Hmm. And um, I, there's a couple of other books in languages that I don't know, that I am still trying to teach myself. Not a single copy of Vogue magazine. No, but I actually have two dots in a cult, so perhaps it'd be of interest to me to take a look at some of them. And I believe Victor has at least it's true. I see. Annabelle, while they're perusing the shelves, what are you doing? I'm just sitting on the couch a minute. Do I get cell reception down here? Yeah. In this room, yes. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just check Twitter for, um, you know, updates. Whole fire situation. Mm -hmm. Anything? There, on the side table next to where you're sitting, there is a picture of a person in a frame. Someone with red hair. So the picture is of a woman with red hair. Yeah. It it is. Uh, dusty and has not been touched in a while. There's a definite area of dust around the frame. The woman in the picture, Annabelle, is young, you would say, you know, perhaps in her very early 20s, if that student age. She has long red hair, pale skin, sort of a, a wry smile. She has just realized her picture is being taken in the photograph. I don't want to draw attention to it at all, but I just run my finger along the bottom edge of it. It's dusty. Hasn't been touched in a while. Or cleaned. No. In the corridor. Yeah, I head over through the corridor to the room where I keep the cells. So you go to the holding area. Your steps quickening as you approach. Yeah. Um, 
There is only one person in there. Uh, the individual in the holding cell stands as you approach. He, uh, uh, hello, Frank. Already? Yeah. Thought it would be longer. So did I. Don't worry, it's not gonna happen for a long time after this. You know, strangely, that's n not very comforting. Yeah. Well. And I open the cell. He backs away from you a few steps, but there's nowhere for him to go. And he knows he can't outrun you. He knows he can't overpower you. And he is, uh definitely also one of my clan. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I lunge forward. He stiffens, he braces him. himself for it. I pin him to the bars. And he I, turns his head away so that he doesn't have to look. I, I start draining. Sink your fangs into the scabrous, peeling, leathery flesh. Finally, finally, you have what you need. After long nights of self denial, resistance, trying to tough it out, trying not to give in, finally. You take what you so desperately need. You take the only thing that can sustain you. How much do you take? Oh, I meant for hunger. I try and take three. How much do I actually take? Your beast whispers in your ear. Just do it. Roll your unspent, undamaged willpower. <laughs> With hunger. No hunger, just the willpower. Two successes. It's the maximum I could possibly get. You can leave him alive if you wish to. <laughs> I pull myself away. falls backwards, slumps to the cold concrete floor of the cell, still unliving, barely. You can take three hunger dice away. He murmurs something under his breath that you don't quite catch. Stand there for a minute. How much longer? How much more? I... I take the last of it. You kneel next to him on the floor of the cell. Lower your mouth to let your fangs puncture his disgusting skin once more, and you end his suffering. As the last of what he was passes into you, you feel something flutter past your mind, a sense of gratitude. A release. <laughs> the body, none too old for a vampire, exhibits no signs of change yet. 
it will revert to a death state. But it's so young, it will hardly change at all. Clean it up later. I'm gonna leave the room. Your hunger pool is reduced to zero. Yeah. And for the first time in so many nights, you are full and sated (laughs) and whole. In the library, you can each make two roles, academics and occult. Uh, Excuse me, intelligence and occult. I don't know if this is relevant. Almost had your role two skill. I'm specifically looking for um, stuff about Latin mysticism, Santa Muerte, anything relevant to Petronella. And Antonio mm-hmm. is what I'm looking for. Okay. Well, crap. <laughs> I was looking for Spanish is, text is that's that kind of similar. Is what you're both looking for? Yeah. Okay. Actually, it, can I just assist her then? Yes. Well, whoever's got the higher pool can make the roll, and the <laughs> helper can assist by adding one die to the total pool. You have less blood than me. I don't want to freak out and destroy the library. So, <laughs> <laughs> Look, this place sucks. <laughs> I'm very angry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Other, did you add one for my assistant? No, I did not. Or die. Uh, three successes. Three total. Yes. There are several works that are histories of Griffith Park and the surrounding area, but they are not original. They're not Spanish texts. They're more modern histories. Um, they deal with the subjects that you already know about, the bizarre history concerning the transfer of land that should have been Petronella's into the hands of her uncle, Don Antonio. Mm -hmm. They are concerned with the uh, absolutely strange and bizarre history of Griffith, J. Griffith, and his uh, rather sordid past, the attempted murder that he committed, his shooting and his eventual conveyance of the property to the city. Hmm. There are um, more modern histories of the area that talk about things that are already readily available to you, but you don't find any texts that are relevant to the occult mysteries that you've been investigating dealing with Griffith Park. Seems like they need to write another book about ghost sightings in Griffith Park. Well, maybe when this is all over, we can. You know, that just tells you how crazy our life is, Mm -hmm. that this place exists, moving walls, magic mirrors, portals to other dimensions, and that's not the craziest thing that's happened to us. Question, in one of those uh, books, do they have a map of the lands by any chance? Long dramatic pause. (laughs) Yes, in one of the books, there is a color plate that looks like a reproduction of a drawing that's very familiar to you. It's the same drawing of a map that you took out of the obelisk that marks the grave of Griffith J. Griffith. Uh, So exact copy, there's no lines that are changed? No, it's not an exact copy. Okay. Your map your copy that you took from the obelisk, Mm -hmm. it has locations marked on it that this map does not. You can clearly see the outlines of the old ranchero that form the territory that is today known as Griffith Park. And you can see the place where the hacienda is located, the very abandoned hacienda that you investigated and confronted the spirit of Don Antonio driving him out of the body of the doomed park ranger. But there are other locations on your copy that aren't here. Hmm. I'd like to take a picture of this one, though. You take a, use your phone to uh, take a photograph of it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Compare it later. They're busy with the books, and I'm trying to mind my own business to scroll through my timeline in mm-hmm. peace. Mm-hmm. I just... 
There are several trending local news articles about the fire at the Maharaja Club. They, at least as far as you can tell, are um, mundane, reporting. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna look at that picture again. I just, I, I, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, uh, It's hard uh, to geez. tell anything about a, just, uh, an individual you know, I, just from a photograph, but. Um, so just pick it up and just see if there's like a, like a date or who do I, does she look familiar? Is there anything written on the back of the frame? Is there anything on the back of the frame? The back of the no. frame and Nothing? Nothing. Does she look at all familiar to you? No. No, you've never seen this individual before. Well, it's obvious that, like, she was looking at the person who was taking the camera. Taking the She's picture. looking at the person who took the picture. She looks almost surprised that her picture is being taken. She's just realized it at the moment of the photograph. Yeah. The book that uh, you found it in is uh, a very mundane history. The map, as I said, is a facsimile, almost like a, a photocopy. Mm -hmm. So the same map probably appears in other history books as well. Victor. Do I notice Annabelle holding the picture? Because we're in an adjacent room. You're, as far as I understand, I believe you're all in the same room. Uh, well, in, yeah, in the library. there's a doorway that but, leads to the library, but there's no actual door that oh, closes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then do I notice this? Were you um, looking? Because you, you guys seem you pretty guys were pretty. You two, I think, were very absorbed in the book. So I think not yet. After you're finished comparing the map, what do you do with it? Uh, put, it put it back. Mm -hmm. Exactly where it was at. Put it back. Respect his stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Another roll, Victor, if you wouldn't mind. Of what, sir? This time, let me look at your character sheet. Ooh. Mm. I'm at three hunger, if that's relevant. <laughs> three hunger. It's fine. I'm right. Make it wits and awareness. One success. Your eyes stray over the books, noting titles, sizes, descriptions. You feel like you should be remembering something, something that you heard about or read about a long time ago, but it can't quite come to you. That's when your eyes rest on Annabelle as she stares at the photograph. I just walk over and look at the picture. I Try to hide it from yeah. her? I just want to show you. What's that? There's a picture. I'm sorry. It's his business. I shouldn't have been looking. I mean, he doesn't strike me as a terribly sentimental person. I mean, who is it? Just, I don't know. I don't recognize him. But it's his business. He may not be a sentimental person, but he does value his privacy. I put it down, face down on the table. And this would be when you return, Jasper. Hi. Do you shut the door I shut behind the door you? I shut So, what's our plan? I've been thinking about this, and although we can't be sure, I think that was the Inquisition that hit us. Mm. Mm, no. Fiorenza didn't know there was the seamless planting of the gas main story, the seamless planting of the story in the press. Nobody's actually looking for me. That's a lot of moving pieces to not be on her radar. I'm pretty so sure it's the people that were in open war against that know where we live What if who Anna, we are. What if Anavar was acting on his own? That's kind of what I was thinking. She would know, but fine. I mean, I'm not what? saying you're wrong. I'm just saying. What do you know about Vannevar's movements and his state of mind right now. I know he's desperate. I know that the Inquisition moved in on San Francisco and he promised everybody new lands in LA. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're making their moves, we're making ours. You know? When you guys were at Elysium, you said that he and Suzanne, Suzette? Suzanne. 
Um, oh my god. That they use their powers. Isn't that not allowed? Nelly? Oh. Yeah. Nelly, would you please make a willpower roll? It's only not allowed. Roll your. Yeah, come on. No, it's quite it's a bad willpower. That's how they roll. But we were not in the position to catch any. Yeah. One success. The urge to contact her strong rises in your throat. You can feel it, but you don't. Well, I think we need to uh, get on the same page because if Sanchez, Sanchez and Wright check, those, that does not roll off the tongue. Sanchez and Wright check. Want to meet? I think we should, but yeah. if they're the ones that hit us, we're going to come in a lot different than if they're not. Yeah. I don't think they're the ones that hit us. Neither do I. I have my druthers about the cam, and they're acting against Vanavar. Well, I mean, obviously it wasn't vampires that personally did what happened. It was probably either the Inquisition or someone's ghouls. True. Well, well look, Abrams lent us some resources to you know, kind of move things along in the mortar world the way that we want them to. Maybe we can use some of those resources to look into this, because this is pretty important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who did it? How? Why? I mean, we can, but again, this is quite a seamless cover story that was activated instantly. I know, but you're jumping to conclusions right now. We need to get solid data on this. Well, I, ha I did have Greg looking into seeing that if it's his, one of his people or not, Inquisition. So I should hopefully hear back soon. Speaking of Daffodil, Greg Demetrius, he texts you. Oh. Is now a good time? Question mark. Speak of the angel. He can't come here. I figured as much. You can talk to him. So I text back, good time for what? Can I call, question mark. Yes. A moment later, he calls you. I put him on speakerphone this time. Hey. Hey, you're hey, on- boss lady. You're on speakerphone with the rest of the group. Did you know your dial tone is Toxic by Britney Spears? Oh okay. my what? God. It's a great song, I just didn't know if you oh, knew. Oh, come on. Yeah, it just, just saying, maybe discuss it later. I hate Britney Spears. Right. <gasps> come now, it's a great song. I just didn't know if you knew it was your song. No matter who you are, everybody likes Toxic. We yeah, will we're gonna have chat about that later. Give that yeah. massive slide against Miss Spears and what do you got for us? Oh my God, you wanna hear what I found out or not? Yes. Yes. Look, um, like I thought, gas main story, bullshit. I went down there, took a look around quietly. I don't think I was seen. Took Chelsea with me, second pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, lavender or whatever the flower of the week is. That's right. Yeah. Uh, sorry there, uh, Victor. Your 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 place is a total loss. We were moving anyway. Some of the other buildings in the block are gone too. My guess, explosive device, not improvised, something big and professional grade. Maybe, um, maybe uh, uh, judging from the look of it, uh, maybe in the garage, but more likely in one of the buildings next door to you. Because, I don't know, the, at least that's what my training tells me. Sure. And does this look like street level stuff or military grade? No way, man, this is professional. Thank They're you. gonna find it. I mean, if they haven't found it already, but the fact that there's nothing in the press, 
means that if they found it and it's not you know who, they're keeping it quiet to investigate. And if they didn't find it, that's even worse. Is uh, is Chelsea with you? Yeah. A Chelsea, a Lavender, Lavender. I don't know what she's identifying as these days. We're in private. Uh, in your old uh, line of work, you see anything like that happen with your previous employer? She doesn't answer at first. You can hear her whisper to Greg, can we really talk about this on the phone? Yeah, vaguely, vaguely. Um, not quite like this. <laughs> Miss Griffith, are you okay? Should uh, we come to you? I'm fine, dear. Thank you for asking. Are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. There's a sound of movement. You can hear that Greg has probably taken the phone away from her. Okay, look, I should get off this call. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, notify me if anything else comes up. Yeah. Thank you. Will I, uh, will I see you later? I hope so. I hang up. Okay. Bye, Greg. Well, I don't want to talk to the Nosferatu yet because That's smart. every question has a cost and I don't want to reveal if we're exposed. You guys are the mysticism experts. Is this something Ava could look into? That Eva might have some scrying thing? She's not right, Chipotle, at the moment. Is she okay? Do we have eyes on her since this happened? Nope. Oh. <sighs> Nor did we have eyes on her before it happened. And also because I taught her some very specific things, no one has eyes on her. I mean, uh, uh, is it worth me reaching out to her? I mean... I already did. There was no response. I'm just gonna text her. What is the text? Mm, I hope you're doing okay. And I attach a, a little cherry blossom emoji. Takes a few minutes to get a reply. It's very brief. It just says, Thank you. I'll be fine. Okay. Take care. <laughs> it's a nice looking ring there. Thanks. Where's it from? It's a puzzle. Huh. A puzzle ring? Yeah. Not that kind of puzzle ring. Oh. Anyway. So, do we just sit here and wait for Sanchez and Rajek? You don't have to wait long. You get a text message. It says, time to talk. Mm. And it's signed S. It is from a number that you do not recognize. I reply where? Pick a place. I reply Hollywood and Highland. Reply is okay. 30 minutes. So we're gonna meet on Abrams turf. Yeah, if something gets blown up, I want it to be his next time. You think it's Abrams? No, I don't actually. He's just still mad at Abrams. Yeah, I am. Hey, how are we gonna get there? I don't want. I can't show up in a cab. Just don't know. If that's a good idea. That's high we risk. Can take a, what do you call them? And lift. Is that what they're called? They blew up my cars. You did that. Who does that? A lot of people. <sighs> well, we get you like clear. your fancy car service. You could call that. Well, but we got to get clear here first. Yes. Yeah. We do. So are you okay? I'm fine now. Can I see that picture? One picture. No. 
Respect in your home. What picture? That one. It's face down, but that one right there. Oh. That wasn't face down before. I thought you might want some privacy. Sorry. You are correct. Okay. Great. So we're going to go meet these two grease Thank balls you for again. Putting my books away, by the way. Hmm? Oh, of course. It's lovely. I'd like to come back at a less apocalyptic time. Yeah, I really couldn't understand any of them. Yeah. They're all in Latin. No, it helps if you read Latin. Sadly, you read Latin? I only yeah. read Vogue. You read Spanish. Do you read Spanish Vogue? Yes. It's quite good. Okay, focus. No, she only reads Spanish, but she can't read Spanish Vogue. <laughs> uh, all right, game faces. Here's the thing. Uh, I maintain, I don't think these guys did it, but we're about to find out. So either they're going to try and hit us again or they won't. I guess the play is if they try some insanity, you can run to Abrams. I will not. And we uh, see how it goes. Great. Okay. Ride share? Sure. Get some distance away. Mm. Well, <clears throat> it would be difficult to summon a car to the access entrance on the L.A. River, so you would need to at least go back to the gas station. So, is that what you do? Yes. Okay. While I'm route, I'd like to send a text message to Abram saying, headed your way. You okay? Question mark. I don't know. Safe to talk, question mark. Negative. I'll have eyes on it. Nothing back. Let me make a note. So, through the night, away from Griffith Park, and down into Hollywood, Lights, people, the excitement, at least for tourists. It's a vibrant, stark contrast to what you have been living in the last 24 hours. Here, most people don't know that your property blew up and that lives were lost. They don't care about tales of the supernatural. They don't know that there are monsters in the crowd with them. The rideshare car drops you off at Hollywood and Highland, a massive, huge monument to excess, to retail indulgence. It's no grove, perhaps, but it's still impressive. And at this time of night, it is teeming with people. All of Hollywood Boulevard is lit up. You can see that there's some sort of movie premiere up at the Chinese theater. It's cordoned off. There are limos. There are emergency vehicles to keep the crowd away. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of cameras. It's a busy night in Hollywood. Specifically, um, at that intersection, across from Ripley's, believe it or not, there's a quasi-abandoned building there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's I been under construction for who knows how long. I would like to make my way into that building. That's where you want to go. I'm uh, seen passage. So you will conceal yourself. And I succeeded my rounds check. So your hunger does not grow. It's nice to feel full. It's nice to feel content. Sated. I'd like to point out too that what you did doesn't violate your convictions, nor does it violate the chronicle tenant. No. So there is no humanity stain for you. From across the street in this 
semi-abandoned construction zone, which you let yourself in without permission, disregarding the no trespassing and hard hat only signs, you can see the whole intersection, the traffic, the people, the Hollywood and Highland at night is a zoo. Thousands of people and many of them are having a great time. Across the street from one of the bar many bars, you can see what looks like a bachelorette party spilling out into the street. People are excited. The bride-to-be is wearing some sort of crepe paper wedding gown creation. A lot of balloons. She's got a tiara. She looks so happy and carefree. And all her friends are laughing. From inside the, I I text the number back that that's that's where I am. All right. Inside this structure, it's only partially finished. It's mostly scaffolding and bare walls and dangling electrical cords that haven't been hooked up yet, piping that goes nowhere. It's easy to conceal yourselves deep within the structure. It's weird to be in a building that has no exterior walls so that you can see the world going by, separated only by a few pieces of timber. Again, my gut is this isn't a hit, but it is by no means safe. No. So if you all don't want to be here, you don't have to. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere without you. Any special preparations? No. So you wait. I am stepped back enough that like a, just a casual person walking down the sidewalk won't see me, but I want uh, Sanchez and Rychek to be able to say, I don't want them to feel like this is an ambush. I don't want them to feel like it's a trap, mm. basically. So I'm somewhat out of back, but in the light, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Let's see if it makes sense to them when they get here. <laughs> right. Hey, uh, and I'll have my hands out. I have the guns on me, but I'm, you know. Both of them? I do still have both guns on me, yeah, because I haven't had a chance to leave them anywhere else. I'm going to presume that everyone is armed with their usual choice of weapons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well. But, I mean, I'm not straight hands out, but, you know, I'm out. You wait about 10 minutes. And you hear the sound of movement. Someone is gaining access to the building grounds just like you did, illegally, and with a little bit of noise. You hear footsteps on the bare concrete. Two figures step into the structure where you can see them and they stop about a dozen paces away. In the dim light, you recognize both of them. Sanchez, his face scarred from some childhood disease or injury, wearing an overcoat that he doesn't really need at this time of year over his rather threadbare suit. And Rychek, tall, pale, disapproving. Hey. Gentlemen. Good evening. Happened to you. <sighs> Heard you had some trouble. Minor inconvenience. What'd you hear about it? That much, huh? You know... What we heard and what happened doesn't necessarily square. Hmm. I feel similarly. Believe it or not, it seemed a bit gauche for people in our line of work to do such a thing. Yeah, you don't say. Well, I hate to disappoint you, Baron Temple. You can tell that saying the words makes him almost physically ill. An undisputed Baron Temple. You're putting me on. I'm quite serious. <laughs> it's, it's implied. It's implied. I, I, I don't... hate to disappoint you, yeah. Baron Temple. 
but you're wrong. About? Rychek has stepped back a few paces. He can not easily be seen in the shadows, and he is very visibly inspecting the structure as though expecting an ambush or a trap. I, it is true, the Nosferatu that are with me are very thorough, but I'd intended just to have a pleasant chat like the last time we met, gentlemen. Doesn't mean all of our chats will be so pleasant, but tonight doesn't have to be anything worse than is what we've already been through. It's all right, Nosferatu with me are very thorough too. Okay. Well, it seems maybe perhaps that once again, like last time, we have a common interest. I mean, neither side wants this to turn into an open war. And this was an act of war, if indeed it was perpetrated by the ivory tower. Yeah, we did it. And when I say we, I don't really mean we. You mean some bad actors within your organization, surely. I mean, I've been through a bunch of sieges. It's not normally how we do things. Here, I thought solidarity, uh, commonality of purpose. I thought that was the point of the ivory tower. I thought that's what you were offering all of us, was to be able to be a part of a continuous whole. I believe you said no. Mm. Mm. I believe you said, in effect, hell no. So you're kind of outside the law. But it doesn't change the fact that my associates and I would prefer that this not get so out of hand. Just like we talked about before with the Los Perdidos thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And a colder war would suit us better. I mean, but yeah. But this is kind of hot. And I believe you. And do you know why I believe you? Because of my efficient Nosferatu friend? Because you're standing here right now. Sure. So, in the interest of not having any more structures drop on anyone else's head tonight, is there anyone in particular that maybe I should discuss this with further to make sure such a thing doesn't happen again? You know, if I knew how to make sure this sort of thing didn't happen again, I wouldn't be here. Now, it would be easier for us, and for me in particular, if you had all gone up in a puff of flame and smoke. <laughs> and Regrettable. Yet, everyone's inconvenience. We are still here. So what can we do to make things a little more convenient for you now other than not being alive. Oh, I mean, that'd be good for a start if you could arrange that. But Okay, I'll take that under consideration. What else? So, if this keeps up, we're all gonna be screwed. Quite. So, we're gonna do our part to try to um, cool things down, I, back things off. I, for my part, won't blow up anyone's haven tonight. Maybe no more rallies. Maybe not so many Valkyries patrolling the streets on motorcycles attacking us. <laughs> I mean, you can't, I mean, come on. I mean, one of those is not exactly proven, right? I mean, there, are, there were uh, people trying to push drugs in protected neighborhoods, right? And the hell do you care? Why do I care that you're pushing drugs in neighborhoods? I mean, I don't know. I mean, so what? No. Mm -mm. Discuss that? No. No, that's not, that's not an option. That's not, 
a normal thing. I don't know why I would have to explain it to you. Not normal. Yeah. You know, really, here's the thing. You got uh, weird priorities. The other, the other one, the rallies and things, is just freedom of speech. Right? You wouldn't come down so hard on this and try to kill us for holding these rallies if you didn't think that they were, you know, worth something, right? I don't suppose your friend X is around. You should uh, probably tell him to check on his friends in Santa Monica. So that was uh, the same bad actors, or was that you personally this time? Not my job. What is your job? Uh, spin doctor. Useful, useful. In I'm a little overworked right now. Believe me, I know exactly how that feels. Um, you know. Check with your friend Baron Therese too and ask about some of her people. I use the word people just in case. You know, um. You realize that these scare tactics just push people into the against the ivory tower camp, right? You can't rule a people that don't want to be ruled. They'll fight back. Well, actually you can, but it's hard. Not forever though. It never happens forever. Eventually, even if it takes centuries, which we all have, above the my, tower falls. Above my pay grade. Mm. I'm interested in so what do you want? Spin you want control. assurances that we won't defend what's ours, what belongs to the people? No, I think you're gonna do that no matter what I ask you to do. He's asking for us to do it less publicly. Can I just ask you for just one small favor? And then I think this delightful chat of ours is going to be concluded. In, in exchange, as I said, I myself will not blow up anyone's haven tonight. If you will do one small thing for me. What's that? Would you take the message back to Prince Thomas? Since you used my title, I will use his. I meant what I said about the Convention of Thorns. It is in all of our best interests. You yourself understand it is in all of our best interests to talk this out and figure something out that is not going to get the final death brought down on all of us. I don't suppose there's any chance that you'd all just surrender. <laughs> the exact same chance that you would all surrender. Well, I guess I'm gonna be overworked. But not tonight. Not tonight. So listen, I'm gonna do my best to calm things down. I advise you to do the same on your side. Agreed. I'll deal with that. I can't stop him from doing this. He doesn't wanna be stopped. And if he knew I was here talking to you, I'd be in a lot more trouble than you are. How many are more like you? And how many are following Vannevar? It's not quite like that. Everybody needs to make a wits and awareness. You're after the path of least resistance. I understand. Wits and what, I'm sorry? Wits and awareness. Wits and awareness. Dice lost, down. I've lost two cursed floor dice now. Five successes, three, two. Burning a willpower. You're spending willpower to increase your wits? Yeah. Or, re or to reroll? To reroll. To reroll. Yeah. Three. Three. Okay. Everybody got at least one success. Okay. Jasper got five. So here's what happens in order. The first thing that happens is Jasper, you notice Rychek, who's been hanging back and inspecting the building looking for a trap, stiffen, reach under his jacket, pull out a gun, and point it up into the interior of the building far above you. And he says, ah, oh, shit. Next most success is three, is that right? 
So, Nelly and Victor, you hear the sound from above. Some sort of movement. Somebody's up there, up over your heads. And Annabelle, I'm afraid your attention is still on Sanchez. Jasper? How high is it up to where? Uh, well, you're not sure what you're looking for. It's half-finished floors and scaffolds and ladders and chains above you. Is there It's a, like a, a giant municipal jungle gym. Is there a platform up there that would be within leaping height? Yes. Uh, I will... It's the kind of platform that workers might stand on, supported by chains to, um, you know, to rivet on or to weld on. Okay. I will... Uh, Leap straight up, attempting to land quietly. Attempting to land quietly. Well, you know the role. <laughs> and uh, I do have a specialty against kindred. It would apply. <laughs> that is um, six successes. Six successes. Weird to see no blood dice. <laughs> Six successes. You propel yourself straight upwards into the shadows above your heads, landing on the wooden platform. It sways back and forth on its chains. You think for a moment you're going to go over and go right back down again, but you reach out, grab one of the chains, steady yourself. You're pretty quiet about it, too. Brightcheck is climbing scaffolding, gun in hand. I look around for Sanchez. Is like what? 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 Now what? I thought you said you were alone. We I just thought we were. It's like, go carry the message, please. Ah, uh, yeah. great. He excuses himself. I watch without him another leave. word. I watch him leave just in case I don't turn around and get shot in the back. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like... Up here, Jasper. You have a great view of everybody down on the street level, but you're looking in the shadows here. It's hard to see. It's not that much light. So, make, so you don't have heightened senses. I don't. You do not, in fact, uh, you have no augmentation at all. No. Okay. Make it wits and awareness. Two successes. You think, you think there's a shape, maybe, uh, it's hard to say, 40, 50 feet away on this level, standing on another platform. It's not really easy to see. It's, it's barely a shadow, but it seems to be moving independently of everything else. Um, you said 40, 50 feet? Yeah. That's, sorry, maybe there's three. That's farther than I can it's Farther than you can leave. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the ground, Sanchez has departed. Rychek is nearly at your level now. He's clinging to the scaffolding. He's pointing his gun in the general direction of the shape that you saw, but you can tell that he's uh, having a hard time getting a bead on anything. As much as I can, I'm going to make my way in that direction. Okay. You'll have to make your way from scaffold to scaffold and on half-finished floors. Yeah. It's probably not possible to be silent doing this. Yeah. There's too much loose material and too many um, unsafe surfaces to walk on. You're gonna have to concentrate on keeping your balance and not yeah. falling. And hopefully he won't be able to penetrate my off. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. And start heroic leaping up, Actually, or not heroic leaping, sorry, soaring leaping upwards. So you wanna to get to uh, a scaffold like Jasper has? Yes, but I'm kind of being overt on purpose. I know he's sneaking. I don't know where he is, but I know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So I very much am like, ah, wah, boom. Ah, okay, so making no effort whatsoever to be quiet. None. Uh, is your goal to um, actually get there and uh, take an action, or are you trying to intimidate? I really, I re uh, hmm. Nelly? I'm trying to be a distraction. I ate my spider. I'm going to start climbing up. You are going to devour your prepared mixture of arachnid and vitae. Mm, delicious. Mm -hmm. Crunchy, too. Yep. Protein. And you're going to scale mm -hmm. scaffolding, skittering upwards like an insect. Mm -hmm. Annabelle. 
Do they have to be looking at me for Spark of Rage? They certainly have to be able to see you. Let's double check something really quickly in the rules. All right, I should have checked. There's no resist and it can affect the crowd. Mm. It's a composure versus intelligence. Mm -hmm. another. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unclear about the actual visual distance, but um, if they can see you, they'd be close enough to be affected. It wouldn't work you know, across a football field, of course, but I think that anyone who is in the proximity to do you harm would be affected. <clears throat> hey, you in the shadows! Why don't you come down and fight us, you coward? You gonna do it? Okay. Roll manipulation and potence. You'll need to make a rouse check as well while I gather my dice pool. <laughs> mm. Fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Four. One. Multiple things happen at once. Jasper. Yeah. From the shadows that you were looking at comes a shout of anger. Pure, raw, guttural fury. The sound has no words. It's just rage. There you are. And um. somebody or something leaps all the way from the scaffolding that you were headed towards down. Down. I would like to, as much as possible, rocket myself to try and intercept midair. Want to try to hit it in midair <laughs> like yeah. a missile? Yeah. The other thing that happens is right check opens fire. Yeah. So hopefully this... he won't miss. Well, uh... Hard to hit a falling body, though. Yeah. Okay. Hope he has a silencer. <laughs> <laughs> figure has something in its hands. It looks like a piece of metal, rebar maybe. Okay. I'm, draw I'm drawing, I draw my knife as I leap as well. So you're drawing your knife, leaping, trying to hit this moving target. Yeah. That's a considerable number of successes yep. necessary. So, it's very uh, awesome. it'll be, whew, what, are, what is mid-air acrobatics? You're using a knife. Are you trying to impact or are you trying to stab? I'm trying to impact. You're trying to impact. And once I impact, then I'll try and anchor myself to it. Okay, <laughs> let's make it, um, it's, it's not strength-based, so this has got to be dexterity, Dex. and I'll let you use either brawl or athletics, whichever is better for you. Okay. With my potence, uh, it's not strength, so it doesn't matter. Not strength. Okay. Two successes. Three successes. Three successes. So you collide in midair with this shape. Becoming visible once I do. Knocking its trajectory off. So you're both gonna plummet to the earth, uh, smashing into the concrete floor below. Jasper. Take two, two superficial damage. Uh, have it, so one superficial one. damage. Um, the figure, someone you don't recognize. You don't know who it is? Was it, it was no one we saw at Elysium either. Hmm, that's a good question. Did you see this person at Elysium? She's fast. She's moving quickly even though she's been slammed into the ground so it's difficult to get a look at her features but she might have been there. Um, can I, oh sorry. You were... I, say, I don't recognize her from the parking lot, no? Excellent. From the parking garage. Hi. I would like to um, compel. You're gonna stop. try to catch her attention and tell her to stop? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nelly, what's going to be your action? Oh, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, 
because it all happens at one time. I'm I'm sorry. I was gonna I was thinking of doing extinguish vite on her. So I was gonna let go and come down and, and do extinguish vite. You uh, as you're moving. Uh, we don't have a discrete set of uh, of defined actions, but. Um, you can skitter down. Yeah. You can try to drop and land safely. That's what I was working on. Mm, okay. It's probably best to work on getting down safely first. Skitter. All right. Skitter down. We'll skitter down. Okay. Skitter down. Annabelle. Um. I'm gonna grab her. You're gonna try to grab her. Yeah. Okay. And Jasper. Also gonna try and grab her. Uh, you're already sort of entangled with her. So she's still with. She's just moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I want to try and pin her to you're the floor. To all right, so from Victor, we will need the uh, dominate roll. From Jasper, we will need a grappling check. Strength plus athletics. Mm -hmm. Annabelle, the same for you. And Nelly, you make it down safely, and your intention is to dart into the uh, into the fray and... Yeah, yeah, Extin yeah, extinguish for Vite. Um, that would be eight successes. Jeez. <laughs> I apparently took wrestling at some point. Eight in life. successes. <laughs> That's rather Ooh. a lot of successes. Eight. Also eight. eight. Also. <laughs> Nicely done. Mm -hmm. How many for you? Four. All right. So she's not really fighting back either. Yeah. Order of operations here. Deadly death drop. She's not going to fight back against the two of you. You can feel her limbs go slack, as she doesn't resist being pinned to the concrete floor. Victor, Jesus. what did you get? Yeah. What do you tell her? Stop. One word command. One no. word command. Stop. Stop. This is the first time you've had a good look at her. And you're not sure if she was at Elysium or not. So many kindred, so many faces, so many rings to kiss. Too many. She has very fine, Features, very pale skin. She hasn't seen any sun in a long time. Her hair is very dark. It's braided in a single braid that you suspect is very long. She's wearing what you would describe as maybe BDUs, utilitarian clothing, combat boots, a black tank top. I would like to take her picture. You're gonna pull out your phone mm -hmm. and take a picture. And Nelly, you are moving in, ready to touch, mm -hmm. ready to grasp. Who are you? She twists under your grip, moving her face so she's looking at you. She smiles. She bears her fangs, and she kisses you. Thanks. Right on the cheek. <sighs> and then she begins to dissolve. She becomes shadow, darkness, air. I just stand It's up. uncanny. <sighs> you can feel the cold, darkness seeping through your fingers. Ah, shit. It's like trying to grab water. Bye. Uh, what, is there something I can do? Ah. Did you get that picture? Nelly. Make a wits and a cult roll. Oh, dear. Um, While she's rolling this, in my, ex well, I don't even know if I have any experience with this, but I know I need eye contact for a lot of my powers to work. Yeah. But I mean. How many successes, Nelly? Two. Two? No, you have fought one before. Mm-hmm. You and Abrams talked about it fairly recently. In Venice, I believe it was. Yeah. You've seen this before. They can move into one shadow and out another. Flip hair. They Grab. can't cover a lot of distance when they do it. She's 
probably still here somewhere. Mm -hmm. But she can do this moving from shadow to shadow. How far away? So I drop down from the mm -hmm. wall. Is there a shadow near me? There are shadows everywhere. everywhere inside the interior of this building. If you recall, I mentioned that it was very dimly lit. The shadows are deep outside the uh, light. I'm going to activate Sense the Unseen. Sense the Unseen. I just make it wits and aspects. Um, or resolve in aspects, whichever is higher for you. Jasper? I'm just standing in the middle of the room where, after where she was and just listening. Three successes? Yeah. So. I don't have enough dice. Your eyes catch a hint of movement very far above you. Mm. You can see, it's almost like um, a disturbance in the night air. Not unlike when you catch a Nosferatu spying on you out of the corner of your eye, but you can't quite pierce the obfuscate. Do I still have cling of the insect still? Well, it only operates for a limited period of time. Okay. She's she's gone. What what's that? This is gonna sound dumb. Was that a ghost? No, mm -hmm. no, we've seen ghosts. Remember, it was much different. Okay, right. Well, that's why I prefaced yeah, it, it with, was, with, with it was this might be dumb. She also touched me. I could. She was physical. She was one of us. Yeah. She left a little lip gloss on you. Hey, I've seen what she does with kissing. Are you okay? Is that? What is she? Maybe do? you don't touch it. What does she do kissing? Uh, I just don't worry about it. Mm. It's nothing. I don't tend not to pay attention to that. I mean, you spit poison, man. Like, uh, is it that unusual that I think her no, kissing you might be better? I'm just curious what she. No, it's just she was being cheeky. Okay. Literally. Literally. Is right check still here? Right check has given up his search. I, I don't know where she went. Uh, Are yeah. yours though? Yes. She's one of the prince, one of Vannevar's. Oh wow. I, okay. I guess you'd better get out of here then. I just say, uh, hey, look. Um, for your cover story, do you want me to make a big scene like you got away from us? Do we? I don't want you. I don't want this coming back on you. I think it's a little late for that. Yeah, she heard everything. I don't even know what her name is. She's been hanging around the court for ever since the Grove thing. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard about that. She's um she's what you she's what you call the scourge. The scourge. He's got a scourge. So, um, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. Cause I gotta come up with a really damn good story. Hey, not for nothing. But if you have a hard time with the Camarilla, we're also having a hard time with the Camarilla and we'll take anybody. If you don't hear from us again, he's not gonna stop. Neither will we. And I'm not sure he cares that much about the masquerade anymore. He lost San Francisco. Do not let him lose Los Angeles. We will find a way. Look, I'm gonna be lucky to live through tonight, but I gotta go. Yeah, be safe. Thank you for coming. He's really desperate. Also, she didn't follow us, she followed you. If she knew where we were, she'd have hit us already. How do you know she hasn't? Huh, <laughs> we don't. Nobody should have to live like this. Unlive like this. Arrivederci. Bye. See you around. Till next time. Later. Nice moves. Thanks. Yeah. 
Remember that. He departs the same way he came, getting out through the uh, fences, the scaffolding, past this, the saw horses. Does this building have any sort of basement? You're not sure. I want to look around. I don't want a chance walking on Hollywood and Highland if I can avoid it. Just on the off chance, that's when paparazzi will show up. Mm, it doesn't have a basement, but like most office and commercial buildings in this neighborhood, it does have a, a parking garage, but no, it's not connected to anything yet. Is the new club going to be ready for us? We could go tonight. Okay. But it's not manned, you know. We've lost a lot of people today. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll go back to your place? Probably. Well... Okay. I probably need to stop at my home to uh, pick up some clothes since all of that was burned up in uh, the fire. Yeah, I'm good. Maybe maybe we changed at the college, just for now. Just one more night, one more night. You're beautiful, you look fantastic. Just give me one more night. Okay. Can I talk to you for a sec? Before you speak, Annabelle, you receive a text message. It's from Mark. Can I see you soon? Question mark. Yes. Yes. I miss you. The response is a heart. <laughs> when uh, when we get clear, I text Fiorenza that picture and I and I text, that's who hit us. Text back is the longest text you've ever received from Fiorenza. It says, one, never text a picture of us ever again to anyone. Two, Run. What did you want to talk about? I'm sorry, I looked. No. I'm gonna text Abram real quick. We need to talk. He texts back. Come on over. Look to what? The picture. I didn't hide it anywhere. No, I just felt like an invasion of privacy, and I know how much you value that. No, thank you for the apology, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's just something left over. I'm sorry. You know, I... It's hard. Hard to leave them behind. I know. And I know you know. So. The Baroque web of subterfusion violence gets more complex. And now you'll have even more difficult choices to make. When everyone leaves the building, I want to stay for a moment and say to the empty air in the room, I want to have a meeting. And then I leave. And then you leave. Well, that's the end of tonight's episode. But before we go, you probably just watched tonight's episode as part of International Tabletop Day 2019. We're really happy to be part of this international celebration of tabletop gaming because it's something that we all love and that we're all passionate about. We wanted to thank you for watching 
on behalf of all the International Tabletop Day sponsors who are helping to make this happen. Skybound Games, Board Game Geek, The OP, The Rook and Raven, and The Alamo Draft House. All these fun companies came together to make International Tabletop Day happen and to make this broadcast possible. There are probably links running through the chat right now. Uh, please check them out. Give them some love and support because they all make great stuff and they are all worth your time as supporters of tabletop gaming. So thank you to our sponsors, our fans, our crew, our producers for making this show possible. We will see you in our next episode at our regular time, which is Friday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific. And if you're watching this on International Tabletop Day, keep watching because there's more fun stuff to come. Good night.